Shave your head with the all-new Pitbull from Skull Shaver. No nicks, no cuts, no problem. You can shave your face or head wet or dry. Pitbull from Skull Shaver just does the job. You're just seconds away from a super smooth shave this summer with Pitbull. Save 10% right now. Go to SkullShaver.com and use promo code SPORT. Become a local hero like Bill. He's an appliance engineer. He joined Local Heroes, an online service that matches customers with trusted traders, like plumbers, carpenters, roofers and more. With Local Heroes, I'd say the jobs I want. There's no bidding, and it's free to join with no subscription fees. And right now, we're on the lookout for more tradespeople. So there's never been a better time to join Local Heroes. Search Local Heroes and join thousands of trusted tradespeople. Across the UK, online and on DAB. Talk Radio, on the hour news headlines. Good evening, I'm David Dom. Labour's calling for all prisons to be brought back under public control after the government has been forced to step in at HMP Birmingham. Inspectors found the jail, which was being run by the security firm G4S, to be in a state of crisis. Shadow Justice Minister Yasmin Kreshi has been telling Talk Radio why contracts like it are failing. This is a problem with privatisation which is taking place in the whole of a number of civil service departments uh, and in you know, security or even probation services. The government has tried to do these things on the cheap. They've tried to think as if they can... The site is now going to be taken over because of appalling squalor and violence. Stuart Waddell worked there for over 20 years until last October when the pressure became too much. They became no-go areas. I remember walking up to the falls on, on one wing and four prisoners standing at the top of the landing asking us what I'm doing up there. The prisoners were effectively running the jail. The prisoners were calling the shots. A man who was poisoned by a nerve agent in Wiltshire has been taken into intensive care. Charlie Rowley was discharged from hospital a month after being exposed to Novichok. His partner, Dawn Sturgis, died. Police say it's not related to the substance. The Pope's admitted the Catholic Church showed no care to victims of sexual abuse by priests and that it had been covered up in the past. Wow. He's written a letter to all Roman Catholics to condemn what he yeah, called the atrocities of clerical sexual abuse. Only one in ten adults aged over 55 are saving for old age. New research shows more than half are spending on things they want or need at present instead of planning for future care. Mm-hmm. Financial okay. agony aunt Annie Shaw has been speaking to talk radio. Not enough people are really able to think about it because they've got other priorities such as their today, today living costs you know, as of now and then their saving for their pension. Uh, incidentally, uh, under this scheme of where you're automatically put into your employer's pension scheme, those rates are going off. You're having actually more taken out of your wages now to top up that pension. Good for your retirement. That means you've got less for today. And it's been revealed Norwich City Football Club tried to put off their opponents by painting their away dressing room pink. Apparently, it's in a bid to lower testosterone levels. What? So far this what season, they've had they mixed results. And the weather, showers dying out overnight. Tomorrow will start off cloudy for most with some drizzle before it brightens up. The far northwest will turn wet and windy later in the day. The Late Night Alternative with Catherine Boyle. Speech Radio with a difference. Talk Radio. And the difference tonight is double woman. Yay. Is that XXXX it chromosome? Totally is. After Friday, we needed to redress the balance somewhat. It got very blokey there for it a got, moment. It, yeah, a little retroactive. <laughs> it did. Well, it was very 90s, actually, for a good oh, three or four hours before they, they came to blows. What, like, what, 1890s? Yeah. Or, In, no. uh, well, they were talking about, you know, Totty of the Week and all that stuff. I mean, we could do that if that's what the people want, but I don't yeah. think we do anymore. Yeah, we'll do what the people want. We'll do Because we're people pleasers. Well, that's what ladies do. Within reason. But given the fact that we're on Periscope, we don't really want to do what those people want. Okay. Oh, right. three four 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 nine nine one thousand. Point taken. If you want to give us a call. We're just talking about that story that was mentioned in the news about Norwich Football Club apparently trying to... Um, de-testosterone the opponents by painting their dressing room pink. Psych them out with colors. That <laughs> sounds not very masculine to me. That is some deep sort of uh, psyops there. But you were saying they do that in prison. Yeah, that's a that's a technique. I don't know. I mean, they do say that there's things like yellow. If you are in a yellow room, that makes you feel crazy and act crazy. Oh, really? They say red makes you hungry and apparently pink calms you. I don't know if it takes away the testosterone. It just makes you mellow. There's nothing wrong with that. 
Yeah, some of those footballers could do with being a bit more mellow when yeah. you see them throwing themselves around like idiots. But I, you know, I would suggest that they throw their um, efforts and energy into perhaps just being better at their sport. So less less on the redecoration tip and more like just do some jumping jacks yeah. and, and, you know, throw kick the ball around. I was going to say throw the ball around because that's what we do in America, God's country. What the hell's going on? There's a man coming in here. What do you want? Look at this man. Some keys. I have a lot of. <laughs> ah, shit. All right, do How you, you doing? All right. Yeah. Do you wear pink? Do you have pink in your uh, house? I've got pink things. Yeah, but yeah. not much. Yeah, not, not, not much. much. Yeah. yeah. What have you lost? Keys. Yeah. Keys. There oh, are no keys oh, here, my friend. Okay. No keys. You want to get one of those keys that you whistle to? That's a good idea. Go to right, go yeah. to the nineties again. The nineties are where you'll find those key rings. Were they? It was that just a little uh, sneaky attempt to kind of bloke up the show? For sure. They just sent that man sure. in. There'll be another one in in about with 10 a, minutes. With all that facial hair? Yes. Yeah. It didn't work. He it's wears pink. He does wear pink. He's, he's the wrong one. They're, I think they're going to soften us up with that one, and then they'll start sending in the, <laughs> the big guns. <laughs> Do you I, have big guns here? No, not really. No, yeah. they're all in the other channel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and they're not really guns so much as... Yeah, pistols? Yeah, water pistols. Yeah, water pistols. <laughs> Okay. But bless them, they try. Yeah. Oh, three four 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 nine nine one thousand. Um, you can be a big gun or a water pistol. We'll be happy to fire you. Yes. Anyway, by the way, I didn't get fired. Uh, anyone who is uh, concerned about that, I can put your mind at rest. I tell you who we have got. We've got Rory on the line. Hey, Rory. Coming the other side. Hey. Hey, you you're in Edinburgh, right? I'm in Edinburgh. Do you hear Edinburgh around me, Cass? Hang on, let's have a listen. Yeah, definite, the definite sound of Edinburgh. Yeah, there's a little white yeah. noise going on there. <laughs> a little white noise. There's two policemen in front of me, and there's like, there's not a lot, a lot of banging or beeping or anything, but it's, it's, it's good. No, Edinburgh's yeah, a very civilized place. Earlier. Sorry. Go on, what did you say? No, it's okay. I said it was noisier earlier. Oh, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. So, what have you been up to, Rory? You're, uh, you're our Edinburgh I... correspondent. Been doing loads. I saw Sarah Barron today. Um, who she's you awesome. The show. She was amazing. Um, she is like the dirtiest woman I've ever seen on stage. It was like, uh, oh my god! Um, if you like dirty women, <laughs> go and see her. <laughs> it was seriously. It was. It was. It was really good. It was. It was. It was amazing. Oh, I'm glad she did um, well. Yeah, and I, I remember, and she remembered me, and I, I remember her saying when I called in, like about three weeks ago or something, and she said, um, "Come and see me after the show and everything." And then she remembered me and everything, so that was that was like enlightening and self-esteem inducing and everything. Yeah. And I understand why I, I understand why Ian likes her because you know Ian has this thing where he likes women who look a bit like men. <laughs> Did you know this? I thought you were his best friend. He doesn't like women that look a bit like... What do you mean? He likes... He, he said this before. He likes women with men's names. He likes, you know, Cari Grant from Cari and David's Pop Shop? Yeah. He likes her because she looks like a man. He said this before. <laughs> and what kind... Uh, wait, what kind of man? Like, in what way? Like, biceps or just like a really square jaw or an Adam's apple? A sort of... I don't know, Kitty. It's sort of just... Um, a general, what, uh, it's, a, it's a lump in her trousers? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that is there. That is there. Her whole thing. <laughs> She's got a thing. You know what she does? She produces her, um, uh, her porn story that right. she wrote when she was 13 years old. <laughs> I'm intrigued. She produces it She's on great. the stage. She's amazing. She's got like four star reviews, but it is the dirtiest show. You know, everything. I hope she takes it other other places because this is her first go, isn't it, Edinburgh? I, it's her first go, but she's, I think she's got like five four star reviews, and uh, she's done so well. She's, good, she's, she's amazing. Good, she's really really good. It was such a good thing to have her on the show. Are you seeing other acts while you're up there? I've seen loads of great. I, I've, I've seen Gina Alexander, who's a Canadian uh, of Jamaican origin, and she is so funny. She's brilliant like about relationships and people and so many things she had this thing she's called diana alexander yeah but uh she she said she was like um oh a, a, a scottish person said to me um oh your your name is, is scottish 
And uh, how'd you get that? And she was like, uh, slavery? <laughs> there, oh. there is that. Oh. It's the so thing that links us all together. Yeah, yeah um, and I saw Jolly Boat. Jolly Boat are fantastic. They had uh, they do parody songs. They do a version of Park Life. Oh yeah. Where like all uh, it's it's based on a pub quiz where all the answers rhyme with Park Life. <laughs> um, it's stunning. I mean, I've been going to Edinburgh for like eight years, yeah. and this is the best one ever because I'm old and um, I know what I'm doing. I don't have any shame anymore. So. Well, and also, I guess now you're cutting right through all the... Because there's a lot of stuff to cut through in Edinburgh. I, I mean, I've only been the once and I can see how you would get completely overwhelmed by the amount of choice there. And also the number of people doing stuff in the street and trying to sort of coax you in at two o'clock in the yeah. afternoon to go and see stuff. And before you know it, you've, you've kind of missed the stuff that you really wanted to see. Yeah, Rory, what's your Edinburgh hack? Like, how do you focus in on just the good stuff, on the tenderloin? <laughs> Here's the thing to do. I went to a show by Dahlia Malek. It's called The Interruption Show. And um, the deal is that uh, Dahlia and Colin Chadwick are on the stage and they do their bit. Then the next thing is that they introduced like four different comedians. Mm. So they had Eleanor Tiernan, they had um, Dana Alexander, they had uh, two other people I can't remember. But they like interrupt them and ask them what, what ask, basically interrupt their set. Yeah. And say, oh, can you elaborate on that or can you tell me what that was about and if you go to compilation shows basically is what I'm trying to say yeah. you'll see like 10 minutes of somebody's one hour show and then you next day you're going and going to their show and they'll tell you what their show is at the end so yeah. anybody who's like going to be in Edinburgh for the next you know it, I think it runs until Sunday um, so you've got all week um, just go to a compilation show maybe on the first night second night and then you'll then you'll see some of those people that I think that's my Edinburgh hack, kid. Yeah, let's be honest, some of it is, I mean, there's a lot of like amateurish stuff there, because that's the whole point, you know, it's supposed to be people trying out, it's not supposed to be tried and tested comics going and doing their things, although that does happen still. But there are some real gems, aren't there? We, we saw a thing last year when we were in Edinburgh, was it last year or the year before? It was um, a one-man show about Charles Hawtrey from the Carry On films. Oh, oh wow. It was amazing. Yeah. And we were sitting in what was essentially, what looked a lot like, what, like an old classroom or an old lecture theatre, so we're all in rows but with with desks in front of us. It wasn't the most comfortable thing, but for, the, for that half an hour, hour or whatever it was, we were completely lost in this world. And it was just one guy, one set. He was just fantastic. It was amazing. Mm. And, and that's the thing. You're seeing shows all over the city in the, in the weirdest places, but there's some real talent there. It's a smorgasbord of inspirational creativity. We're just out of uh, Paul Foot's show. Yeah. Um, and uh, he was he was stunning. He has he's, he's, he's actually he's part of a growing um, uh, collective of people in the British media who have a problem with Greg Wallace. And that was like about ten <laughs> minutes of his set. Well, <laughs> Greg Wallace, the the lover of the big spoon from the cooking shows. From the cooking shows, yeah. And he has about ten minutes in the show, which is anti uh, Greg Wallace. He was so concerned about Greg Wallace that he compared it to a certain um, uh, movement against uh, sexual harassment that's been going on for the past year. Wow, really? So, uh, yeah, he said he, said his, he said he wants, by this time next year, for um, his hatred of Greg Wallace and getting Greg Wallace off TV to be as big as the Me Too movement. <laughs> wow. So that, <laughs> that's what we're doing. Wow, oh. rage. He really does not like those shows. No. He I... doesn't like Greg Wallace. He doesn't like Greg Wallace. And a lot of people don't. <laughs> Leon from Gogglebox didn't like Greg Wallace either. And Nick Abbott doesn't like Greg Wallace. I don't mind Greg Wallace. You know what? Greg Wallace needs to go up to Edinburgh and do a rebuttal show. He does. He needs to. Yeah, Kitty. You're right. He totally needs to. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you could take Nick happen. Knowles to do the sort of be the house band. That would be amazing. Yeah, actually, you know what? Talking of Nick Knowles. Sarah Barron has wonderful a wonderful bit about Michael Bolton. Oh God, I love and that I, man. I, oh my God, he was he was featured in her pornography when she was thirteen. What? Yeah. Well, I suppose he did look a bit like Fabio at that time. He was. He just looked like a big, like carved out Easter Island head. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's the 
With a beautiful wig on top. Yeah, yeah. with that like oh. flowing, uh, yeah, meadow just springing forth from Although, his brow. Although, did you ever meadow. see that Netflix special with him? Michael Bolton's romantic Netflix special. No, I missed that. It Catherine. was amazing. Why? Because he took the piss out of himself for oh, an hour. He's he was a cool just, guy. Yeah, he's really cool. You'd I, like him. I, Maybe it's now he's lost the mullet. Maybe that's what the power was. But yeah. he, he was. It, it's well worth having a look for if you can. It's 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 so funny. He just looks constipated when he's singing. I don't like that. How can we be lovers when we can't be friends? How can we roll and not? Something about making the man stand, isn't it? I think. Don't pretend always... you don't know all the words, Roy. Yeah. Oh, oh my God, it's been rolling around my head all day. She played it at the like the end of her show oh, today. I want to see that show now. Yeah. Boy. Oh, come, come, come to Edinburgh. Yeah, come. You got like Saturday and Sunday. Uh, okay. After you do, after you do the week. What's it called? Do you remember what it's called? It's called for worse, F O R W O R S E. As in for better, for worse. All right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, she's so and good. And there are, it's like about marriage and relationships and um, masturbation. Oh, I, <laughs> so. you know, I'm, I have varying skill sets with all three of those. So I, I, it's, it, <laughs> tick, it, tick, tick. It speaks to me, and I need to know. Yeah. I need to go and compare some notes. She's so good. I, I hope she does something. Uh, something closer to where we are. Thanks very much for giving us a ring, Rory. You take care. Enjoy All the rest right, of Edinburgh. Yeah. Have a great week. All right. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye. bye. Good old Rory. 0344 if you want to give us a ring. I did see something about Nick Knowles, actually. We've been talking about him there. He does come up a lot on this show. Does he? Because he's a man yeah. who seems to take himself very seriously, and, of course, that will leave him open to, um, well, ridicule, let's be honest. Why, why do people take themselves... Like, there's... I, <laughs> I was just doing a show, I, I was in L.A. Uh, for the last couple of weeks doing uh, some filming for a BBC4 show that's going to pop up next year. And uh, we're looking at a lot of American artists from the 70s and 80s. And um, one of the art, one of the bands, Hall & Oates, they take themselves very seriously. Do they? Yeah, they do very seriously. Like, no sense of humor. Like, all business, you know, song craft, technique, you know, hard work. That's all great. Not knocking it. But they're just, you know, not... Not a, a, a hint of self-deprecation. Well, even though for most of us, they are kind of fun. They're, I know. They're all about the fun times. It's the music that you play. Like, in fact, I think that John Oates's mustache has a Twitter account or something like that. Like, people love to, you know, it's like fan fiction. Like, yeah. people like to de deconstruct the personas. And um, they're, not, they're not real happy about all of that. They're like, they're, they'll, they'll sort of tolerate, tolerate that sort of level of, of uh, fan fiction and fun, but they're not embracing it. Uh, do you think it's because they feel like their art is more serious than... Do they... Hmm, I wonder whether they feel like people take the mickey out of them. Well, I think And their art is serious business to them. I think the thing is, I mean, they're... Ex you know, Whereas Lionel Richie seems to have fun with it. Yeah, that's a great example, because the thing is, is both Lionel Richie and Daryl Hall and John Oates as a duo um, are, are wildly talented yeah. and have made masterworks of pop music over the decades so you know no one's no flies on those guys but um yeah you think that they could unclench their buttocks a little bit hollow notes it's a shame isn't it i interviewed alvin star just once and i thought he'd be fun yeah wasn't wasn't oh you know what david cassidy also kind of he used to be pretty uptight about things i you know william shatner the same way and and i guess there is that thing where, where they get defensive because pop culture is pop and it's perhaps seen as disposable but it really isn't because yeah. it's embedded in our dna over the decades and we still love i mean i still love the partridge family because i listened to them non-stop when i was a kid well there's a theory isn't there that pop music is silly and for girls until like 20 years later when the guys decide that actually it was quite cool and then yeah. all of a sudden um, they know more than the girls who followed them oh. absolutely religiously that whole thing thank you so much that is exactly it and then they deconstruct it and get all like, and explain it to you explain it to you and get all egghead meathead about it yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, it, I feel it's a real shame. And pop music, you know, my parents would always say, oh, this is crap, you know, that you're listening to. And you go, well, it's not supposed to be music you sit and listen to. It was supposed to be music that was on at parties. It's in on the background. It's yeah. making you dance. You know, and it's, it's not for you, mom no, and dad. No. And so what about this Nick Knowles character? So you're oh, saying... well, okay, so you know he had his own album that he made. I think his brother was in the band and stuff. Yeah. It kind of smacked of someone who... Um, Try hard? Someone who no one said no to. Okay. Someone who no one said, ah, do you know what, Nick, maybe this is just for us, for fun, for home. 
and it you know it, it went on the amazon um you know charts and stuff and it was very quickly reduced and and people laughed at it a lot and he, he did try very hard he made some videos yeah um look them up if you ever okay. want to laugh but here's another thing that he, he don't mess with him when it comes to cafeterias oh what television presenter nick knowles called some called something of a social media stir when he posted 40 tweets about a cafe 40. after they told him he would have to wait an hour for a sandwich to be honest an hour for a sandwich is excessive it is excessive but also did... this is a man who can redecorate your house in 15 minutes why can he do that? diy sos you oh, see okay all right so he knows about budgets and he knows about time. He he knows about yeah how to budget your time. <laughs> the DIY SOS presenter vented his pros frustration on Twitter following a visit to the Curious Cafe in Cheltenham on Saturday. He did not wait for the sandwich because he had an event to attend, he said. Right. Knowles, 55, in case you were wondering, right. said, I'm surprised anyone in the food business would think asking any customers to wait for an hour for food is OK. Any customers, meaning, and I'm a special Did one. he Did he actually, I wonder if he said, don't you know who I am? Did he say I can that? Almost guarantee he did. Yes. The Curious Cafe responded by pointing out it has a very small kitchen and only two chefs, adding its food is the highest of quality. But Knowles, who did not wait for the meal, replied, "Yeah, I can see that, and people love the place, but tables were free. Perhaps less tables, a more prep space solution." Ah, uh, uh, he's trying to get himself a job. He wants to be a prep chef. <laughs> well, he wants to make them a nice workbench. Yes. The restaurant said the garden tables were completely full. Until we can expand our kitchen at peak time, there will be a wait. Okay, I, they're both jerks i mean he's a bum head and they're just bad at their job they can't make a sandwich in an hour, an hour. i mean what kind of sandwich was it oh, you know, yeah. yeah that is there's some deficiencies being bandied about there from both parties yeah yeah much as i hate to admit but, that maybe um, but wait a minute 40 t 40 tweets from him about 40 is excessive right okay this is what psychologists call, and perhaps our psychologist who, who listens in can, can opine on this matter, but displacement. There's something else that's eating at him. What is it? Perhaps it's the fact that nobody liked his music. Well, he loved it, okay. but nobody else did. But he took it out. He took it out on the sandwich makers, who admittedly are not a very dab hand at making no. sandwiches. It sounds like they do need to butter a bit faster. They need to, to get that knife in and out, in and out, in and out. <laughs> Hello, Hugh. Hi there. Hey, what's going on? Um, well, I'm happy to hear Katie back on the show. Oh, thanks, you. Um, and I was I was wondering about accents, particularly yes. Katie's accent. Yeah, I'm wondering about it. Help. Do you do you have to do anything to preserve your you know because you've lived yes. in the UK for a long time yes. on and off, but you know you still sound just the same as you always did. Ah, uh, oh, yes. but do you? Well, here's the thing. That's a great question, and I'm always interested in accents and the way they morph. Um, so when I have occasion to review various TV and radio shows that, that I did in the 90s, I'm always struck by the fact that I think I sound transatlantic, like more transatlantic then, and almost like a little camp. I don't you know. Mean, you mean transatlantic or mid-Atlantic? Uh, well, mid, no, like like um, yeah, mid-Atlantic. Well corrected, sure. Cat, gotcha. Um, but oh, a little, so, a, just <laughs> but a little, but a little bit like I, I have one foot in both camps, is what I'm trying to say. So, but um, I did go back to L.A. I or I lived in Los Angeles for 12 years, from 2000 to 2012, and. I think that I I reinforced my natural American accent and, in fact, got more confident with it. Because when I first moved here in the 80s, I think I felt a little less than. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the British accent or all the accents that you have are really cool. And I, you know, my sound in my own head stuck out like a sore thumb. So I You think were a I kid as well then. Yeah, you know, I was you? younger and I, I thought I was sort of trying to blend in. But... Now, yeah, so, but to answer your question, I think uh, it's about confidence. I think you start, you just get used to, like, yeah, this is how I sound, and I'm going to keep sounding like this. And the only time that I will mask it or slightly change my accent is literally British people cannot understand me if I say uh, hall instead of hall <laughs> or t talk instead of talk like i have to kind of ape a british accent for people to be to understand that i'm saying you know what wa i can't even say it, water I, I my still, sister's had problems when she lived in the states yeah. getting water she she'd oh, ask for water and get waffles yeah 
wafers. Oh, really? Does anyone, when you go to America, does anyone say that you sound British? No, here's oh. what they, they, they used to a little bit. Um, I mean, one thing for sure is that my uh, cadence and my inflection is more British than American. So I'll, you know, would you like some coffee? You know, that we would go, <laughs> do you want some coffee? And so I, I kind of, uh, they'll pick up on that. But really what I think people pick up on in America is they think that I've, I sound posh, like a posh American. Like I've, because I have, um, I enunciate. Uh -huh. uh, Is it like a New England thing? Oh, yeah, like I've gone to a, a good finishing school, you know, a good boarding school, finishing school. So to American ears, I sound actually quite elegant and posh, and you guys think that I'm like a big old clodhopper. We see right through it. Yeah, you do. Right, thanks for calling, you. Okay. No, Bye-bye. 344 You're listening to Talk Radio. Talk radio, dial up some dialogue. Talk radio, we'll get you talking. With a welcome bonus from the no annual fee British Airways American Express credit card, your next getaway's not far away. So whether it's welcome to drifting down the canals of Amsterdam, or be avenue to midnight strolls in Paris, say welcome to a European adventure. Spend £1,000 in your first three months of card membership and get 5000 bonus Avios. That's enough to get away to Europe sooner. Search BA Amex to find out more. Representative 22.9% APR variable. Applicants must My be 18 years old or over and approval is subject to status. Conditions and exclusions apply. If you switch to Vodafone's unlimited fibre home broadband, you could be listening to this show on a Sonos Play One. Or choose from a range of amazing tech products worth up to £199. And Vodafone Pay Monthly customers can get super fast home broadband with guaranteed Guaranteed speeds for only £24 a month. But hurry, offer ends 3rd of September. The future is exciting. Ready? Vodafone. 80-month agreement subject to credit check acceptance and availability. Tech offer valid for new or renewing customers. Terms and exclusions apply. Visit vodafone.co.uk slash broadband. Bladder weakness is nothing to be embarrassed about. It affects one in four men aged 40 and over. It can stop you from attending live sports matches or taking part, which just isn't cricket. Tenor Men is the protective absorbent solution which keeps urine leakage under control, leaving you to get on with doing all the things in life you like doing, without the fear of drips and dribbles. Yes! For helpful advice and a free no-obligation sample pack, visit tenor.co.uk slash men today. Tenor Men. Discreet protection. Keep control. Philip Schofield here, playing a bit of jazz piano. If, like me, you value your free time, then why not sell your car with webuyanycar.com? Sure, you might get a bit more money selling privately, but do you really need all that extra hassle? Wouldn't you rather be playing some smooth jazz? So if you value your time, enter your reg number now at webuyanycar.com. Admin fee may apply. For more information, see webarnycar.com slash info. Experience the unconventional, the unpredictable, and the completely unorthodox. The Late Night Alternative with Catherine Boyle on Talk Radio. So I had a birthday while I was away. Um, Your own? Yeah, mine. Oh, wow. And it's the first one since my grandma died. So it was the first one where I wasn't expecting an envelope with old people's writing on it. Oh. And then on my birthday, an envelope arrived but it wasn't from her it was from my step granddad who's always been kind of he's kind of eccentric and he, i've never really felt like he's not not my granddad and mm -hmm. they got married when he was they're in their 70s and stuff so, yeah, so he's, he's, they've been around for a while yeah they together. have but yeah. but he's he's kind of um he's not a massively affectionate person and i didn't know what our relationship would be now that we haven't got grandma in common right so um I got this birthday card from him and I opened it up and it was the first time he'd written inside it from, from your granddad. Oh. And he put in quote marks and he put, P.S. He said, that makes me sound ancient, but I suppose I am. But it was a happy birthday thing. Oh. That was the first one he'd written and I, I don't know whether he's ever written a, I don't know whether he's ever written a card for a grandchild before he doesn't have any children of his own. Right. But here's the thing. He's so funny because he, he's got all these funny quirks and stuff. And he's not, a, like I say, he's not a massively emotional sort of person. Mm. He's very methodical. He's the sort of person who I actually think that maybe there's there's a bit of Asperger's or something there mm -hmm. because of various things. But, of course, in his day, wouldn't have been diagnosed. And he functions fine, you sure. know. But there are, there are various things like the job he does um, was always kind of a solitary job that was um, all pattern based and so he would be able to throw himself into it and no one would interrupt his routines and we noticed that he 
didn't like a lot of people in the house because it would disrupt routines. He'd like have they would watch Countdown twice a day, right? The first time when it went out, and the second time he would have recorded it, and they would watch it again, <gasps> despite the fact they knew what all the answers were. Oh my gosh! And he put a timer on the television so it switches off at ten o'clock because nobody needs to be watching the television after ten o'clock. Oh stuff. my god! Fun so, bully. You, well, this is the thing. It's kind of because he always had. A wife that he was looking after and he was in sole charge of he was able to run along those tracks still you yes. know what i mean so that's why i'm saying to you that i wasn't sure what our relationship would be afterwards because i didn't feel like i was hugely welcome when i went there because i felt like i was a disruption yes but he does really strange things like if you're um if you're um having breakfast there and you don't eat a piece of toast you'll find it wrapped up he saved it oh. and um and what is that? That's not from, like, a poverty-ridden no, childhood? not at or? all. I think his parents were quite well off. It's just his thing. He doesn't believe in throwing things away. And Anyway, so I I got this card, and I thought was the strangest thing about it was that when I shook it, because I always do these days, because I've been caught out by these glitter bombs before, oh. there was, like, something shakable in it. So I opened it really carefully. But it wasn't glitter in there, and it wouldn't be his kind of style to put glitter in there anyway. He's not that kind of bloke. He's a functional bloke, you know. You're right. There was like a load of rust in the bottom of the envelope. What? I have no idea. I have no idea what that was. Okay, so was the card... To a point where I rang my mum and I said, what the hell do you think this is? And she went, oh, it can't be grandma, can it? Oh! And I said, well, thank God I didn't open it over the bin. Oh! I don't think it is great. It was definitely rust. You know, it looked like, you know, if you have like um, a cast iron pan or something and it starts to flake and so it's black on one side and rusty on the other. Yeah. Is that? I, okay, I'm totally captivated by the idea that it's grandma because that would be the ultimate sentimental. Like if, as if I wasn't tearing up already with the idea of him, you know. Trying to reach out. Yeah, way. reach out. In, you know, grandpa and princess, a little bit of grandma. This is her smile. <laughs> I love it's very it. rusty. A little rusty smile. My theory, because he doesn't throw anything away, I guess something else had been in the envelope before. Oh, yes. Well, oh, something rusty. Yeah, something he was saving. A, a part of something. Yeah. I was going to say also the card. Like, maybe it was the card from the 1960s. It's very hard to tell. It was one of those ones that's got a big poem on the front and it's very kind of old-fashioned and florid. Yeah. So maybe. Maybe. But, um... I was very touched nonetheless in his no, way he was doing his thing. Totally. I mean, he he stepped outside. He had a thought outside of his regimen about how, about you. Yeah. And also, also it's a tribute to your grandma as yeah. well, like the, but your connection yeah. to her. So yeah, that was the, that was the thing that kind of made my, made my birthday really special. Um, and I wasn't expecting it at all. And I'd had a lovely morning. We'd had cake for breakfast and all the usual things. And I got that and I burst uh, into tears. And then I found the rust and I felt, okay, things are resuming as normal. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't go too crazy. We haven't had a total breakthrough here. <laughs> There's something unexplained in the bottom of this envelope. Do you, do you remember there was a film? Um, I, I think I called it P.S. You're Still Dead. But I, I think it's called P.S. I Love You. That's uh -huh. what it is. I haven't seen it. Oh, this was a few Doesn't years leave ago. Notes? Oh, no, I have seen it. Yeah. That, is it Gerard Butler? Yeah, Gerard Butler and Hilary Swank. Yes. Yeah, and uh, so he knew he was dying and they just, you know, like topped up the, the, the letterbox with a bunch of, you know, like had him set to mail out like little love letters. P.S. I'm still dead, uh, but I still love you. I don't know. That's a little beyond the grave control freak for me well it was in that case wasn't it because it was all about sort of trying to get her through it and and pass her on to someone else wasn't it essentially i guess so yeah. i don't know i mean of course it's nice I, I i just have to be snarky and put my little cynical touch but i did think it was almost borderline creepy but um i was sort of thinking that's where you were going with your grandma i thing. thought so too for a yeah. moment you know and i go right this is an old person's writing yeah i haven't got any old people left who's yeah. this well you got that you've got him now got him, and his rust out. Yeah, it turns out I still have. I, Maybe I should go and disrupt his routine a little bit. Yeah, like, I'll just go watch Countdown for the second time with him. <laughs> it's hilarious, though. Yeah. You'll, you'll arrive there, and before you take your coat off, he wants to know when you're leaving. Oh, not personal. Just, just No, just for the schedule. For the sh schedule. He just needs to know. Yeah. Yeah. Does that happen? Does that creep up on all of us? Will we all turn into that, or was he always like that? I think he was always like that, and I think he was kind of... Um, fortunate that he managed to slip into grooves in life where he, he was allowed to continue to be like that and no one confronted him about it yeah huh. i think that's it it's a strange it's a stranger thing but you know so it turns out I, I need to write him a letter i think yeah that's great yeah it was cool hey should we have a word with yayan yeah hey yayan
Hello. Hello, no, long time no speak. What's going on with you? Hello. Well, um, I just wanted to speak to you because I know when I used to listen, you have briefly spoke about depression in the past. Mm-hmm. And um, since recently, I've had depression now. Oh, have you? And about, I won't go into much juicy detail, but I think you can guess. I was in the hospital about three weeks ago, twice in the, in the same week. I stayed in for a few days each time by taking an overdose, but won't go into much detail oh, yeah. on that. But it's just because of family circumstances. And the main reason why I triggered it off, really, you have to say the one, like, is because I don't like bullies. And also, my grandch died on the day I took the first overdose. I see my grandch in the chapel at the rest, and my head just went. I thought it was a good idea, but obviously not. So I just advise a bit of the people, because I'm only I'm so young, I'm only like 18, so mm-hmm. I don't think. It was a good idea to see my grants and travel Well, and for I, some people it's helpful, but obviously it didn't do you any good. No, I thought it was a good idea. People were like, are you sure? Are you sure? I was like, yeah, and then afterwards, I don't... Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah how, how, are you doing these da- how are you doing these days? Well, I'm doing quite all right now. Um, i got a job now working in a retail shop in Savers oh. in, my, in my town. So that's really good. <laughs> I have my, I have a nice tan all the time, so I look nice and dark. I got a perm, so I look older. You got a perm? Yeah, oh, people gosh. say it looks really better, and I might look older. And and I bet you're the talk better. of the town, you're in with your perm and your tan, flipping it. Mm-hmm. Very glamorous. I know. Yeah, and I've got all the move over this new town in February, so I got lots of new friends. Good. Good. Yeah. It sounds like things are looking up then, but you look after yourself because these things creep up, don't they? Yeah, I just thought I'd like to come on talk radio and just give an update on the listeners because I know a few listeners have used to contact me and say they listen to you and they like me coming on now and again just to say an update on my life, basically. Oh, I will listen. I'm glad, I'm glad you're um, onwards and upwards, but yeah, keep in touch with us, yeah. Ian. It's nice to hear from you. Will do. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Uh, if you want to give us a ring, 0344 499 1000, you can talk about stuff we're already talking about, or you can bring in something completely different. It's completely up to you. 0344 499 1000, or you can tweet at Talk Radio, or you can text us, and all you need to do in that case is put talk and then your message, and you send that to 87222. Across the UK, online and on DAB. Talk Radio. For those about to talk, we salute you. It's here, but not for long. Existing and new customers can get Sky's best ever offer on Sky Sports and Entertainment, both in stunning HD. Enjoy over 500 epic live football games and indulge in award-winning shows on Sky Atlantic, all for only £40 a month, saving you over £350. But this offer won't last long. Search sky.com. £20 standard setup for new Sky TV customers. Kit loaned at no cost. New 18-month minimum terms requires HD TV. Saving based on 18-month minimum contract versus £60 per month out of contract. I'm telling you, they're giving away free fivers. How's that work? Grab a copy of The Sun, enter 28 unique codes with Sun Savers and get a fiver back. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Excuse me, girls, I've been waiting here for ages. I need a room. Sorry, sir, I didn't notice you there. And yes, a free fiver. Oh, really? Pick up The Sun and get free fivers with Sun Savers. Yes, really. Honey, why don't we go to your mother's this weekend? You want a trip to my mum's? Yeah, it'd be cool. But it's so far away. Sure, but that's cool. The roads are littered with potholes, remember? Perfect. Anyway, why are you so keen to see my mum? See her? No, thanks. We'll just go there and back. Featuring suspension with progressive hydraulic cushions and 12 driving aids. New Citroen C4 Cactus Hatch makes every journey a joy. With Citroen, comfort is a new cool. Available now with 0% APR over four years. T's and C's apply. Conditional sales subject to status 18 plus. PSA Finance UK Limited. Citroen yeah. UK Limited are acting as a credit broker and not a lender. Citroen. For everyone who wants more from their broadband. For everyone who wants to stream box sets day and night. For everyone who wants to listen to their playlists upstairs and down. Switch to Talk Talk. We've got your back. Our totally unlimited fibre comes with our powerful Wi-Fi hub, giving you a Wi-Fi signal that can't be beaten by any of the other big providers. And a guarantee that if you don't love your new fibre, you're free to leave any time in your first 30 days. And it's 30% off right now. So why wouldn't you switch? Talk, talk for everyone. 18-month contract conditions apply. 
Driving Home with Eamon Holmes. Your number one drive time destination. High revving radio with Eamon Holmes. Showbiz news, current affairs, big names, special guests. If it's happening, we're on it. Get home with Holmes. Driving Home with Eamon Holmes. Weekdays from four on Talk Radio. The Late Night Alternative with Catherine Boyle on Talk Radio. Right, you know, we're talking about, you know, those small gestures that mean so much, like yes. for my granddad, for my step-granddad. Yeah. Well, here's the thing that's, uh, again, divided the internet. This is the new thing, isn't it? Rather than actually finding stories, we, uh, we, we look on Twitter, but this is actually a beauty. This couple had become an internet sensation after making an apparent compromise to keep off the wet weather. Pair were seen walking hand-in-hand hand down a street in Cheshire in driving rain early this month. He had his coat on, but he'd given her his detachable hood. Ah. This video has been viewed nearly two, two million times on Facebook with thousands of women asking if their boyfriends would do the same. Footage was filmed by Jake Shannon, 26, who think, says he thinks the woman had just had her hair done, causing his bo her boyfriend to offer his hood. Not the full coat, mind you. Yeah. You can have the hood. Yeah, so Mr Shannon posted the video on Facebook with the caption, You love your girl, but do you love her enough to give her the hood off your coat? Man setting standards on here that I just can't meet. There's a picture of him. Look, Look at that. I mean, she's getting soaked, but her hair isn't. But he's got, he has the coat pulled up over him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's love. Do you think? Yeah, or what? She's, are you thinking there's something else going on? Like, she's terrifying. <laughs> and he has to hand that hood over or else. I don't think he's going to, I don't, if she was terrifying, he'd give her the whole coat, surely. Yeah, right, right. Or are you just saying that we're so starved for kindness and niceness on social media that we're making a big <laughs> out of a molehill with that maybe yeah he basically he looked fuming that he had to give her his hood <laughs> maybe she had to... someone else wrote gotta wait for this new perm to set it's just cost him 350 pounds that might be closer to the truth yeah so yeah those small gestures did you hear that did you guys already talk about the story about um the couple who were filmed on an airplane by the couple behind them yes and it yeah. got really crappy didn't it well the thing was it was did you talk about it on the show already i don't want to like i think go we back. did i think yeah. we did briefly but i mean it, was, it certainly wasn't mean-spirited it was just kind of a sweet thing where um the uh the couple who were doing the filming had been asked if they'd give up their seat so that uh what was it oh i think the woman needed to sit in a different seat for... Oh, no, that was it. She gave up her seat so the couple could, could sit, sit together. together. Right. And so then her new seat was next to a, a hunky, like, trainer guy. And it turns out that this woman was a, a trainer as well. And then the woman behind them started to take snaps on her phone. She's doing kind of a commentary. And a while commentary. she didn't film their faces, she it didn't. was all kind of, oh, they're touching arms. Yeah. And she said, oh, they're showing pictures on their phone of their family and you know they both look adorable and you know it was just kind of like an innocent like let's match make them and then another shot of them walking together towards uh the baggage carousel at the end of the, the well, flight no you're forgetting the in between times it was oh they've gone to the bathroom they've together. gone to the toilet together and you know, like she'd gone to the toilet first and taken off her baseball cap and fluffed her hair out and then they'd gone gotten up at the same time yeah and then the, then the splash back on that was She's a whore. They've yeah. gone back to do monkey shines and, you know, it's all low as common denominator. And he didn't mind being, because it went viral, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. And he, um, and they, of course, the he couple, came out and said it was me. Yes. She didn't want to be named. Naturally. People found her anyway. And this girl they from the couple her. was, yeah, the girl from the couple was sort of a miserable cow. Oh, wait, this is where she is. You know, yeah. they found her. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a funny, it's just one of those things how, uh, something seemingly innocent spirals out of control and you know goes to the 11th level because of because of the internet and then just that weird thing where you want to participate in it sure like you want to be part of the fun but some of the people want to be negative and they want to like well let's ruin her life this is our chance. We'll bring another happy-looking person down. Yeah, but also a person who's sitting on a plane. She had no idea that yeah. she'd become their entertainment for the afternoon. Oh, and that's another interesting thing about social media and this crazy world we live in is the absence of privacy in all things and how uh, the youngsters willingly give up their privacy. So they're posting their details on, you know, on every platform available and where you can find them and what they're doing without thinking about the consequences. Mm -hmm. Like, they can be tracked down. And privacy is really just a bygone luxury. 
I also think that a lot of people, and I, we had, a, I had an incident of it over the weekend, a lot of people don't realise that they're putting stuff on Twitter that's got their fingerprints all over it. Yeah. So they, you know, if you go on there to shout into the ether and you yeah. at somebody in particular who you don't know and you don't really care about that much, but it's just someone to throw your ball at, you know, yeah. um, it can blow up, at, you know, and... and, and you can't get narky about it when other people take offence to what you're saying. Yeah, why? What, did something happen to you? Oh, you... uh, someone. St yeah, someone started a little thing with me, um, and then it transpired that this guy uh, had been had blocked me years ago. I had never spoken to this guy, so right. it was when I worked at a different radio station. He thought I was so rubbish that he blocked me on Twitter, like I was ever going to speak to him anyway, right. or would notice. Preemptive strike. But then he unblocked me. Then he started talking about where I live on Twitter, and Whoa. it's like, wow, you really don't like me, do you? But you've retained yeah. a lot of my personal information for a number of years. Yes. But then you've got to remember, and this is something I need to hold on to, and I forget, I forget, I forget. Some people aren't. Some people aren't working with the full set of tools. Right. Okay. Some people aren't as switched on to what it means. I mean, you look at this guy's feed and he's just lashing out mainly at women mm. all the time. Yeah. And he seems to be being deliberately kind of um, deliberately aggressive um, and confrontational with people he's never going to meet. And that's probably the point. Yeah. And, you know, and some people on there, let's let's face it. And I'm not saying this guy because I don't know. Yeah. Aren't well. Yeah. So, it's, it's, but it's very when something like that lands in your pocket it's very very tempting to to flash back especially if you're the sort of person who lives on your wits you know doing this job yeah you kind of do you know and yeah. there'll, there'll be a smart mouth answer that comes into your head and i have to fight every impulse to give it to him both barrels you know yes uh, a friend of mine who's a writer in uh, on the west coast of america had a residency up in the pacific northwest in the state of oregon just kind of out in the boondocks out in the sticks and, um, you know, he had to, I guess he was do giving a seminar or a, a series of classes, writing classes, workshops, and he was interviewed by the local newspaper, like, hey, you know, look who's in town, this, you know, he's a writer from San Francisco, it's kind of like one horse town, so they're kind of making a big deal about it, mm -hmm. and then um, he, st the, the article generated all this hate mail, now this was, I think, in the 90s, so it was sort of before all the social media possibilities and potential, but people were writing in, like, a, you know, you're you're a fag, you're from San Francisco, obviously you're gay, you know, he's not, but obviously they it's were... a small town mentality. They thing. were throwing it around as an insult. And, um, you know, who do you think you are uh, coming here with your big city ways and I hope you die. Wow. And, you know, it's just like, it went right to let, you know, you should die, therefore you should die. That's the end of the equation. And the editor of the newspaper took it upon himself to phone some of these people because I guess they sent in, you know, like, you know, Mrs. B. Johnson, here's my number. And he spoke to a lady and she said, she was sort of cornered and abashed. And she said, oh, I, I, I really don't know why I wrote that. I, I, I do feel a bit ashamed. I just don't know why I wrote that. And um, of course, I don't wish that man ill. So I guess people do just have this weird, they think it's called telephone tough, where they're they're hiding behind, you know, in this case, a screen. But a letter. I mean, a letter is a step further, isn't it? Because there's so much more thought that goes into a letter than hammering away at your, you know. <laughs> your, uh... Yeah, banging on the keys like a chimp. Yeah. Are people funny? People are so funny. I mean, How I guess... How do you put up with it? Do you get... Uh, Did you used to get hate mail on the web? Because the word was a controversial thing. Yeah. I, I imagine that you were seen as, you know, being uh, someone who would be a, a rabble rouser. And Well, you know. um, they... If I did, I was pretty much, it was screened, you know, I was protected from it. Although I did get a few, you know, green, literally green ink penned letters. Um, and then just silly stuff from earnest teenagers who were mad about, you know, because I was talking to a man who was eating a cereal bowl full of maggots. And so it was just like, save the whale kid. It was like, what about the maggots feelings? You know, that's cruelty to animals. Like, okay, well, I take your point, but, you know, uh, maybe refocus your your goodwill. Um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't so bad. And I thank my lucky stars that not only was I starting out in television at a time at the you know the dawn of humanity before the World Wide Web, but also that I grew up and went to school before all that. Yeah, you know, because think about. You know, you are probably in the middle of it with your kids, like... Yeah, definitely. But I also the... think about the sort of nonsense I used to get up to, and thank God there were no camera phones. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're all entitled to do stupid stuff. That's what being right. a teenager stroke early to mid-twenties is for, <laughs> surely. I don't necessarily need some 
friend thinking it's hilarious to at me in it, you know, and yeah. it's there for posterity. My God. Yes, yes. I did some really stupid stuff. Like what? Tell me now. I'm going to tell you. That's a, <laughs> you know, stupid, stupid stuff that I that you don't. That's not you anymore. Yeah. But you don't particularly want that being put on your permanent record. <laughs> yes. Well, hmm. well, I wonder if there was. I don't know that there was anything. I mean, certainly some fashion, some bad fashion oh choices, but. I don't know that there's anything. It's not like I went through, you know, a drug hell, drug hell years or, uh, yeah, I've got that ahead of me. That's ahead of me, people. <laughs> still the the, the sexual experimentation and uh, uh, transitioning and the drug hell years. Yeah. Uh, no, well, hopefully my kids will, oh God, I don't know what's going to go on with them. By that time, everyone will have some sort of chip implanted in their face that they'll be able to see what everyone's doing at all times. Won't they? <laughs> yes. Actually, there's a, there's a story about that that brings us neatly on. Okay. This guy who, where is it? Is this a real cyborg? Says the mirror. I can probably answer it now. No. Yeah. But this is a guy who's had microchips injected in his hands that let him control electronics. Huh. Is that just like make sure that your kettle is boiling as you walk through the front door? I'm guessing it's so he doesn't lose the remote control, but yeah. let's see. This is one of these extreme <laughs> uh, body modifiers, so he's got like horns as well. Okay, of course. He's and a, a tail. I don't know. Let me see. I can't see the tail. I can see the horns. And he's got like um, those sort of ear plates that are about the size, I would say probably the size of a small coaster that you'd put your cups Ew, of tea on. Just like a big flaccid strange you know alien genitalia coming out of his earlobe <laughs> i don't know what you're thinking of i don't like it it's beautiful to some people I, i'm uh, it's not for me an extreme body modifier has upgraded his fleshy form god do we need to have used those words with cyborg enhancements that let him communicate with machines russ fox has taken to the interwebs has someone taken the mic to show off his new upgrades in a video he says he has nfc and rfid chips installed in his hand similar to those found in smartphones these can be programmed to carry out functions like unlocking a digital front door lock yes like a key yeah using a samsung smart lock he's able to unlock his front door with just a wave of his hand okay well i wave my hand but i also sort of twist a key it's... yeah he also has replaced the key ignition on his motorcycle with an rfid reader so he can start that using his hand alone also again yeah i've never seen that as a massive Problem. It's going to save like 0.5 seconds. There's even a secret compartment in a tablet he's installed that can only be accessed by unlocking using his hand chip. All of these things are going to be sold or broken within the next five years. All right, he's just living. I mean, it's cute. God bless him. He's living a kind of James Bond fantasy. He's like returning himself into some sort of like sexy robot character, he thinks. It's fun. But what happens if like. How could it go wrong? Well, if he opens other people, because you can open other people's cars, can't you, with keys? Right. Or, you know, how could it be used for evil? What if he, like, if some, if somebody wants to rob him, could they like knock him out, chop oh, off his hand? My God. They'd have all of his controls if they just kept his hand in their pocket. <laughs> they could drive his motorcycle and his car, and and then turn on his kettle. It's taken fifty two minutes, but we've uh, we plunged into Katie Puckrick's world of the macabre. <laughs> yes, yes. And so, yeah, is that a hand in your pocket, or is that just a handy way to uh, hack your life? Well, well, you can access this guy's motorcycle, but I don't know whether it'd be worth it. I don't know what kind of bike he's got. Um, but I don't know. We, it, well, what? you know, we scoff. There's a little scoffing going on here, but. It could, he's an innovator. He's an early adopter. He may be the future. And, and it is, the, you know, we'll look back. People, our descendants will look back to him and go, he was the first. People laughed. And, you know, now it's the year 2525 and we just eat a vitamin pill to stay alive. Sish93 on the mirror comments say, people accepting the mark of the beast. This is how it starts. <gasps> making it easier for you to be controlled and restricted. Well, that's it. That's it. Because that's the thing is who this is what I meant by chopping his hand off. Some there'll be an overlord who will decide, no, you can't enter your house or drive your motorcycle right now until I decide it is so. So there's going to be a central command button. There's going to be one giant remote control in the sky, keeping control of all of us. This guy has not thought this through. We need to contact him pronto. We absolutely need to alert him because danger is imminent. Mark of the beast, though, that's something else. What part of your body would you like to mechanize? Um, well, I'm already bionic. I don't know if you oh. knew this about me. No, go on. But I have a metal rod in my spine. Oh. I had back surgery when I was a teenager. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Because so you had a... a scoliosis. So I have and this, you had full plaster cast on your... I had a big plaster cast, like kind of a really unsexy version of Grace Jones, you know, fiberglass thing. 
corset. Uh, yeah, so I have a I have a metal rod on my back, and I am an inch taller, so it is useful in that respect. I am still only five feet tall, so it didn't didn't really crank me that much. But yeah, if I were to have, uh, I don't know, could I have like enhanced brain function? That's what coffee's for, though. Yeah, exactly. No, think of something more ridiculous. More ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, maybe some. I'd like electric legs. Electric legs. Yes. I was going to say something about my feet. Yeah, something about like. Electric legs, so you could just run like just switch them on and what about go to this, overdrive? What about that guy, the famous killer, Olympic athlete, Pistorius Oscar? Does he have electric legs, or he just has <laughs> no? He just has no, he's he a just knife had stick, and a stick gun. on legs. Yeah, he oh. had, yeah, yeah, he had, to, he had too his much stick, weaponry in his he house. Had, he had w weaponry. I'm getting that mixed up. That's a, a, a different kind of. Um, so what would you do with your electric, electric legs? legs? Well, they could have come in handy quite recently. I went to a, a very old-fashioned theme park. You know these ones where they still have some things made out of wood. Yeah, and, and carousels and like stuff, roller coasters right? made out of wood. We, rickety, rickety, rickety. We went on this amazing ride, which was a boat on a rope. And they just drop you over the side, and then they haul you back up again on the rope. It's so it's so analog. It was brilliant. It was really good fun. <laughs> there was an there was an element of danger there because you thought an element. You thought this is an antique I'm on, so it's yeah. not even like yeah. So, but there was also the worst idea in the world, and it would not get past the dragons these days. It was an it was a monorail. Powered by your legs, right? You had to pedal. <laughs> it's so like a Flintstone. Yes. So, but, and if you stop, everyone stops behind you. Oh. So I went on there and I, I drew the short straw, or at least the shortest child, right? So she's sitting next to me. I started to pedal and I said, come on, you're going to help me. And then I looked down. Her legs didn't reach. Oh, she's fact, useless. Throw her out over the she, side. She was flailing around with these stubs. Yeah. They were not even touching the ends of the pedals. Occasionally yeah. she would hit a pedal and it would start going backwards. I said, look, it's best that you don't even try. Yeah. I was exhausted by the end of that of circuit. And it was worse on the bends. It was very bendy in some places. When it went straight, it was okay, but very bendy. I complained about that thing for the rest of the day. So electric legs in that circumstance would have been but, very useful. But how are your glutes afterward? At the end of the day, were you high and tight in the rump? department got buns of steel katie Puck, oh you could crack a nut <laughs> doing it now <laughs> <laughs> electric legs <laughs> three four 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 nine nine one thousand we're just going to carry on talking balls unless you join in and that is not only a threat it's also a promise you can tweet us at talk radio or you can text talk and your message some wag has just texted talk useful um but we'd like a message too to 87222 we're going to be here for the next two hours it'd be nice um, to have your company 0344 499 1000 you're listening to talk radio my name's Catherine Boyle I'm Katie Puckrick and we're going to be here yammering on oh yeah and that's just the way it is talk radio listen phone talk talk, talk radio we'll get you talking camera I have a Alarm. few items. One is a, a science story Sometimes you wonder why we still call them phones. About lazy However you use yours, Tesco Mobile offer a host of products and services that put you back in control. Now, shh. I'm binge-watching. Visit us in-store or go online to find out more. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Requires Tesco Mobile or unlocked phone. Standard UK landline and mobiles. Home from home destinations. UK residents. 18 plus. Purchase required. Subject to status. T's and C's at tescomobile.com slash terms. Since our first car hit the road in 1898, Renault has always used the latest innovations to make driving more enjoyable. And for our 120th anniversary, we're going to make things just that little bit easier by giving you £500 off the list price. Come and celebrate 120 years with us. Visit your nearest Renault dealer between the 17th and 27th of August for an extra £500 off your new Renault. Test drive and order by October 1st and register by December 31st, 2018. Excludes Zoe and Renault Sport. Retail customers only at participating dealers. T's and C's apply. Visit renault.co.uk slash drive. At Wix, right now, it's our biggest ever kitchen and bathroom summer sale. Explore the wide range of stunning styles and book your free design appointment at wix.co.uk. I'm telling you, they're giving away free fivers. How's that work? Grab a copy of The Sun, enter 28 unique codes with sun savers and get a fiver back. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Excuse me, girls. I've been waiting I mean, here for ages. I need a room. Sorry, sir. I didn't notice you there. And yes, a free fiver. Hey, oh. it's a really cool thing to live Pick up the sun so and get not, free fivers with sun savers. Yes, like, really. Afternoons with Jamie East on Talk Radio. Embark on an afternoon odyssey into a virtual adult playground broadcast at the intersection of the near future and the reimagined past. Eastworld with Jamie East, tomorrow afternoon from 1 on Talk Radio.
A world of adventure. Mad props to the West Wittering Posse. A world of fantasy. Is there anybody out there? Is there anything out there? A world of age-inappropriate footwear. How much flack have I had this week for the clothes on? East World with Jamie East. Tomorrow afternoon from 1 on Talk Radio. I was going to turn up in a nappy next week. <laughs> Listen without consequence. Across the UK, online and on DAB. Talk Radio, on the hour news headlines. Good evening, I'm David Dumb. The security firm which runs Birmingham Prison has welcomed the announcement that it's being taken over by the government. Inspectors have called living conditions utterly appalling after finding blood, sick and cockroaches on the floor. <laughs> Stuart Waddell worked there for over two decades but was forced to leave last October. They had to put us on medication, uh, I was suicidal, panic attacks, anxiety attacks. It was just a horrible feeling. I feel deeply concerned and sorry for my ex-colleagues who still work there. A man who survived the nerve agent poisoning in Wiltshire has been readmitted to hospital. Charlie Rowley was discharged a month ago after being exposed to Novichok, but his partner Dawn Sturgis died. Police say his condition isn't related to the incident, but his brother isn't so sure. I thought it was it. He was in a coma for nine, ten days. And coming out of that, out of, out of intensive care, and then going back into intensive care... It doesn't sound promising. A man's been remanded in custody after appearing before magistrates charged with attempted murder over a crash outside Parliament last week. The 29-year-old from Birmingham is due in court again at the end of the month. Spanish police are treating an attempted attack on a police station in Barcelona as a terror incident. The suspect's been shot dead. A doctor treating a British woman who was rescued after 10 hours at sea says she's in excellent condition. The 46-year-old fell off the back of a cruise ship on Saturday. Mm. Croatian Coast Guard Commander Lovro Orezkovic explains why he thinks she survived. She was probably prepared physically and mentally because she said after that she practiced yoga and she's... uh, a cabin crew member, so probably she have some education. Oh, and Liverpool member. continued their perfect start to the Premier League season with a 2-0 win over Crystal Palace. A James Milner penalty and a late goal from Sadio Mane gave the Reds victory at Sellers Park. And manager Jurgen Klopp told our sister station Talk Sport they aren't thinking of challenging Manchester City for the title. That's a lot of games to come and nothing um, that we have to be think about uh, over the next game already. We only, we only work and we have a lot enough to do how you saw tonight. It was, how I said, not brilliant. It was good in moments. The mic, and the weather, showers dying out overnight. Tomorrow will start off cloudy for most with some drizzle before it brightens up. The far northwest will turn wet and windy later in the day. The Late Night Alternative with Catherine Boyle on Talk Radio. Not just me, though. I've got Katie Pogrick in the studio. Yeah. And she's going to be here all week. Yay. Or for as long as she can stand it, frankly. So far, the stamina is high. Helped by the fact that I'm in a completely different time zone because I've just spent two weeks in Los Angeles and I got in this morning. So oh I have God. no idea where I am, who I am and what time it is. Have you had a sleep in between? I had uh, some weird plane sleeps where um, I had strange claustrophobic dreams. Like I woke up kind of flailing around thinking in my dream I couldn't get something like some clothes off and then I was stuck inside of them and I was sort of flailing and then realized I was making a scene. It's fun for your neighbor? Fun for the neighbor. She was out like a she was like a blob. (laughs) She was she was a fetal blob. I was dreaming about um, the George Harrison song While My Guitar Gently Weeps All Night Last Night. It just went over and over and over. Oh, that's so tedious. Yeah, I love that song, but... Uh, yeah, no, but not over and over and no, over. No, and for no apparent reason. It was just there. Just there. Just there. Yeah, it's sort of just drippy droopy, just yeah. going on and on and on. Yeah. I'll tell you who's not drippy or droopy. Who? Tom! Tom! Hi. 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 And a happy recent birthday to you. Thank you. Catherine. And hi to Katie. Hi. Hi. I, I, I watched you on the words. I've sort of followed you. I've not been a stalker. I okay. just followed you <laughs> on TV. That's fine. I know. Isn't that sad that one always has to qualify that nowadays? It's like, yeah, I kind of exactly. dig what you do. I'm not a stalker. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I, I just want to say as well, uh, Catherine, I'll, t- I'll take you have to go, do you? I have to You're go. Leaving. Oh, no, I don't know whether you um, caught the last 10 minutes of Friday's show. I was um, no. I was able to issue a number of demands and I got an apology 
and my demands okay. are being met. So I, I'll stick around for as long as uh, as long as I'm. You've made my day because you and Lee, uh, there's chemistry, brilliant chemistry, as in really? radio chemistry. There, yeah, fantastic. So. He's all right, really. He just pretends not yeah, to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's all right in, in bits and drabs. Yeah, no, he's fine. He's fine. Um, I've just got to say hello to a friend of mine, Ray, down to All right. And, and other than that, uh, keep up the good keep up the good work and whatever you do brilliantly. Thanks very much. What's and going on with Ray? Has he not got a phone? Sorry? What's going on with Ray? Has he not got a phone? Yeah, I keep telling him to, but, uh, to ring, but he All keeps right. bottling out. OK. Thanks for phoning. He keeps bottling it. <laughs> <laughs> All not, right, you not, take care. Not yeah. everyone's as brave as you, Tom. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks very much. Gary is, though. Gary's always ringing up. Hello, Gary. Well, only between, like, ten and one on weekdays. Only <laughs> 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 all the time. The rest of the day, no. What's uh, going on, Gaffin? Well, if I heard you girls talking about dreams. Yes. OK. I don't know if you're any good at interpreting. Go for this one. Of course one. I am. Yep. I'm an expert in this. I deported someone in my last dream. Oh. So they came in for an interview for a job. I looked up their their thing and their passport was out of date, so I rang the office and they got deported in the dream. Huh. What the heck does that mean? Do you have you don't do anything like that? Like you don't work for no, no, border no. protection or control no. or anything like that? I used to work in recruitment, so there would be times when people's visas wouldn't be right, but it, or they this you know their old CRP checks would be out of date and things. We'd have to do that, but I yeah. never had to deport anybody. Right. That was so, but it was weird, and it was it was I was staying at my mum's as well because it wasn't so. It just felt weird. Now, uh, the person you were deporting, did you feel like you were d doing a public service by getting them out of the country? Like, were they dangerous or strange in any way? They were a bit strange. They didn't answer the questions correctly. So, like, you, you know when you, obviously, you know, when you meet someone and they're a bit weird and you know they're holding oh, yeah. something back. <laughs> yeah. But, I, I, and like, I even remember her name. Her name was Margaret Cho, and I thought that was weird. But even the name carried through in the dream. Yes. Margaret Cho. She's Isn't there a comedian, comedian called Margaret yeah, Cho? American, Asian oh, American. is there? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. She's... I'd never heard of her consciously, so maybe oh, yeah. subconsciously I'm a big fan. Uh, huh. It was weird. The, the, it was very specific about the procedure. You know, like the, I made the phone call in the... You know, like sometimes in yeah. dreams you get like, right, bit, 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 bit. Bit sketchy. Bit sketchy. And then sometimes it's very specific. And what was your feeling? Like, did you feel guilty or did you feel elated after you... I felt guilty. Oh, like it it, it, yeah, it was like a bit just, overkill. Like I was just doing my job, but I didn't feel good about it. Oh, man, I'm sure a so, lot of immigration officials feel exactly yeah. like that. I think that's the key to your dream. I think that it's nothing to do with deportation. It's maybe there's something in your life that you have done that you feel like, well, it's the right thing to do, but it's not the right thing to do. I wonder, oh. is there anything like that? Oh. I'd have to think that's deep. It is. Wow. What are, you, what are you feeling guilty about, Gatford? Lots of things. Well, then, that's why you begin. Well, yeah, supporting Ian on Friday. I know, how could um, you? Well, you know, I'm, I'm dead to you, I understand it. Well, um, it's just enough. been, you know, I just think that your relationship with Ian has always been a difficult one. And I'm surprised that when it came down to choosing between Mum and Dad, you went with Dad. Well, yeah, it's it's a difficult relationship. It's 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 been a number of years. It's, you know, it's codependent. All right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Or just dependent, maybe. Well, just dependent, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's close to you, Gaffer, it's got to be honest. <laughs> one-way street here. It's pretty much a one-way traffic. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, it, I, I genuinely wanted to give the two Ians, comma over the eye, a chance. Yeah. Wow. But it's not to be. No, I don't think it's ever going to work out that way. It's too no. much testosterone. Yeah. Not enough pink. Not enough pink at all. Do, by the way, I do like the way you got the studio. The, the blue is very good. Thank you very, very much. Soothing. You know what we've done? Gone. We've got all the lights on because we've realised that me sitting in the dark may, makes me look like a hag. Oh, also, <laughs> and, and me, I'm like witness protection program. Exactly. So what we do? You don't want to have... hide my light under a bushel. <laughs> I'm an asset. So we had the lights on full, right in the face. Yeah, RuPaul style. We were totally, completely influenced by RuPaul's Drag Race because we've noticed that that lighting is fierce. Yes, we want to be as flawless as a drag queen. And the only way to do that is by having kind of interrogation lights going yeah, on. We have inter We are just interrogating each other here. <laughs> I think that's the comment. For the, I think that's the tagline for the show. So fearless like a drag queen. Oh, yes. Yeah, I if think that's really what I do. So. Thank you very much, ladies, for hey. the, uh, the dream uh, experience, the uh, whatever. Yeah, um, okay, yeah, you think on about that because there's obviously something deep that you hide in there. And you can fix yourself, broken man. Yes. Uh, 0344 499 1000. So let's talk about LA because you've just come back from um, 
from from LA. Yes. And obviously, at the moment, LA is kind of under siege because it is enemy number one, isn't it, from uh, the Trump regime? Well, it's hard to tell. That and the media in full. Yeah, there's so many enemies, isn't it? But um, it's it's a the thing about California is that it has um, it's a very rich state, like a, the. The, it's the, the richest, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it's like the the gross, uh, you know, state product of of that state is akin to you know, France's or something like an entire country's worth. And it, so, in other words, it sustains a lot of the rest of the United States. Um, and they also have very um, progressive and humane laws and policies about. Um, uh, you know, being for migrants. I mean, a lot of the industry in California is is agriculture, and people come up from Mexico seasonally to pick strawberries and to harvest the crops, and then they go back to Mexico, and that's just a, a regular thing that's allowed. And and California's being hit hard by fear of Trump because less people are coming in now because they think that they're going to be clamped down on. I mean, that's happening actually across America. It's happening in uh, Virginia, Maryland, Chesapeake Bay, people come up to do the fishing and the crabbing and everything from Mexico, and they're not now because they're afraid. But uh, it's interesting that in L.A. you will never hear, at least in my experience there this time, you don't run into someone who's just volunteering that they're pro-Trump, but they you do run into people complaining about their parents who are pro-Trump. So it's kind of started this whole uh, intergenerational conflict where... And is that because their parents are not from L.A.? These yeah. are all people that have moved into the yeah. area to... Yeah, I mean, a lot of people who work in the industry in Los Angeles, the entertainment industry, are, are from elsewhere. Mm. Uh, it's it's less usual that somebody is is Southern California born and bred. Um, but the in, it's just very interesting to hear what uh, the people who are pro-Trump in America, the kind of stuff that they say, um, which is... It's just a basically a, a, a glorious case of denial. So anything that has all these stories about, oh, he's had these affairs with these various women who are, you know, playboy models or strippers, that's lies. Um, no problem with that. And, oh, him talking about grabbing women and their niblets and kibbles and bits. Uh, that's, that's just guy talk. That's guy talk. Like, it's fine. And then when you say, well, w what do your folks say about, you know, national parks being chopped up for industry. Oh, Obama did it. And of course, it's a lie. Those things are lies. But even if Obama did do those things, why is that good? It's still not good. It's like, oh, I didn't know he did that. But if I had, I wouldn't want him to do that. But um, but the interesting thing about uh, my trip this time, I'd lived there for 12 years and I'd been away. I mean, I, I sort of dip in and out and go visit every couple of years. So it'd been a, like two, three years since I'd been there last Lots of homelessness now all over Los Angeles, um, uh, kind of intentional and unintentional. So, you know, there's always the, the kind of the classic case of somebody who had, you know, was in the system and then couldn't cut it anymore and they've dropped out or uh -huh. maybe they've, they're on drugs or whatever. But I'm seeing a lot of younger people who are living rough on the streets just around Hollywood. Um, huge homeless encampments, of course, is a, a massive one downtown Los Angeles, and there's drone footage that you can look at online. That's... And are these people that have come to L.A., you know, in the classic yeah. style to seek their fortune, you know, yeah, that would or, have been waiters and... Yeah, they would have done that, um, and they, or they were successful, and they they either aged out of the system or just, uh, you know, it's so hugely competitive, and there's more and more people trying to get work that is a, is a finite amount of work. Then the other big problem is, that I keep hearing, is that rents are going up. So traditionally, LA was such a cheap place to live. So you, unlike London or New York, mm -hmm. um, you, and it, it's sprawling like London. So you could just find a cheapo, you know, group house or, you know, a little ramshackly, you know, apartment complex in the hills. And those things don't exist anymore. But in addition to the unintentional homelessness, there's also this movement af afoot. And we were talking about it a little bit earlier where people are consciously making a decision to downsize their life and make it more, you know, less about conspicuous consumption and more about living minimally and more authentically. And they they brand it in a sexy Instagram way. Like you'll see that. Did, did yeah, you van see? life, isn't it? Van life, yeah. So people... It's girls living in, a, you know, Volkswagen campers. Yeah. So basically the classic homeless trope of living in your car, which never was cool and sexy, but now it's cool and sexy. Um, but I experienced 
uh, or I met somebody who's living that kind of more uh, Golden State Hollywood version of it, this lifeguard who was assigned to the yacht that I was filming on. I was filming on a yacht in Marina Del Rey, and uh, for insurance purposes, we had hired this, you know, tall, strapping, tanned fellow uh, to make sure that we didn't, you know, fall overboard like the lady off the cruise ship. And I noticed when we dropped him off uh, that he lived in what looked like a, you know, Scooby-Doo mystery van. It was just kind of goofy little, you know, uh, camper van, not even a camper van, just some weird little van that was pretty ramshackly. And it turned out that that's where he lives. And that's where all of the lifeguards in uh, on the beaches there in L.A. live. And the lifeguards all have like a lifeguard encampment where they live and they have weenie roasts and uh they it's all very it's like a shanty town for buff tan guys so uh he has a a job he's contributing to society he's daily saving people's lives but he makes his choice because my goodness la is so expensive and if he's an outdoorsy guy why not just keep living outdoors so they're opting out rather than yeah god yeah and he and making a go out of it and there's uh but it's, I tell you, it's a thin line. Like, if you get used to that, I'm not saying it's bad, but, you know, maybe when he's not a buff lifeguard, you know, when he's not in his 20s, 30s or whatever he is, you know, 50, then what do you do? Well, you're pretty used to living in your car. Maybe it's a short jump to, I mean, somebody was telling me, uh, you know, there's tons of strip malls all over LA and just like concrete jungle and Target store after a Walmart store after a grocery store. And, you know, there's a lot of places that aren't very lovely in the Valley. And uh, a friend of mine was saying, oh, yeah, that, you know, right outside the CVS drugstore was a a woman just in a box. She had a it, it, it was like a like a, a couple boxes put together, like a fort that you make when you're a child. Yeah. Like, let's push boxes together. And it's not even in like, oh, I'm just going to try and find a little like a shaded spot or whatever is on the pavement outside a drugstore. Just busy traffic. Beep, mm-hmm. beep. And he sort of peeked inside and she was doing her admin. Like she had her piles of papers and she's just like, you know, taking care of business and like shift shuffling paperwork. And in other words, like someone like me who a minute ago had a home, a roof overhead, and now she's living in a box, but she's still got to, you know, do her admin. Yeah. Well, the stat is something like we're only like one late paycheck away from, you know, a lot of debt problems in this country. Most of us. Yeah. God, I can imagine. I- Yes. I could probably last about two months. Yeah. it's And, and it, that would be scraping. And that, I mean, the, and that's the story of, um, you know, the industry in L.A. It's like a factory town where if the factory is not functioning or or a new technology comes in that changes jobs or, you know, makes jobs obsolete, that's a whole swathe of people out of work. So, for instance, a couple of years ago in post-production production facilities and animation and digital production, became cheaper to do that in Canada and there were tax credits and uh you know the Canadian dollar went further so, so it all shifted there all shifted there so suddenly there's like 200,000 people in Los Angeles who oh I was at the top of my profession and now my profession has moved right and the thing is your average joe will have no sympathy for those people because it looked like they were living the high life in the first place yeah. but if it starts there that you know that's kind of it, yeah. there is a there is a knock-on effect for everyone else isn't there yeah and it's there's it's almost like they're the canaries in the coal mine yeah. because they're so they stop shopping so the guy who's running the shop starts to have financial difficulties yeah. so he starts laying off the shop workers the restaurants the catering you know everything that's tied into that the industry so now th- there's because it's very much a gig economy and there's all you know uber and lyft and all these kind of taxi services are you've never seen so many beautiful uber drivers because they're all out of work actors or they're actors subsidizing uh, you know their their lives but um you know now you get people like executive producers showrunners who are thinking huh let's see my elderly parents are having health problems i think it's a better option for me just to move back to montana mm-hmm. and look after mom and then my wife can like maybe open a yoga studio like we'll clear out the front room and she can turn that into so people are getting very creative they're putting their you know showbiz creativity into other ways and i think yeah. that's happening um i mean I have to address that in my own life as well. Like if the work isn't consistent, I think, well, what else do I do? <laughs> what, what else? Yeah, can what I your offer? transferable skills? Yeah, transferable skills. Yeah. God, um, we were talking earlier on about attractive taxi drivers. Hello, Simon in the New Forest. Oh, oh, oh factory will get you everywhere. I was going to say other end of the spectrum. What did you want to say, Simon? Oh, I thought I'd get abuse from Ian. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Just as a, um, a, a side to what, what you're talking about in a moment, um, 
the, the van living scene is, yeah. is getting bigger in this country too. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm a member on Facebook of a few groups that, that are actively doing it, um, and I've considered it myself. And, uh, and I'm in a, a, a council place, so what does that tell you? you well, know, so, I mean, a council place is more secure than a van. Well, this is it, but, you know, I, I really struggle to pay for my council place. Oh, right. You know, they, 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 they call it affordable housing, but it, it certainly isn't. Yeah. Um, and things are, things are slowly getting worse, and you see, the, the one thing I've noticed uh, that all these van dwellers have in common, because, you know, I'm looking at Facebook and that, is they're all He's a van. <laughs> There's a van, yeah. But they're all happy. Right. They're all content. You yeah, know? but well, they're the ones it, taking pictures it, of themselves. Yeah, it, it just don't be fooled by the the Facebook glaze on the situation. Yeah. They're definitely like jishing it up for the camera. And I dare say that there's a little hope there that they're going to become Instagram stars and yes. earn a lot of money and out of it and be subsidised. A lot of them are subsidised. Exactly. The successful ones, anyway. I know what you're saying, but I just like myself, consider myself, and yeah, you know, the, the the thought of waking up somewhere different every day is appealing and. I don't know. I just when you when you factor in that how much it costs to live and everything's taxed and yes. you factor all that in, it just it becomes a bit of a well, you know, why don't I do this? You know, obviously it's different if you've got kids and stuff. Sure. But the thing is, is like although I'm very fortunate to have my my flat, yeah, been there for 15 years. I'm going to probably sound very ungrateful when I say this. That place has been a ball and chain around my ankles since the day I got it. Because you can't give something that valuable up. Mm. But it's, mean, it's meant that I've been stuck where I am for the last 15 years with very little option to go anywhere else because, you know, give it up, that's it. I won't ever get that again and I can't get a mortgage. So, you know, it's a case of well, what do you do, really? It, it is definitely seductive, that idea of, you know, not having the, the albatross around your neck, you know, and, and being mm. able to, to be mobile but then yeah. are you going to be, if you're mobile, are you waking up somewhere beautiful or are you waking up in kind of a strange industrial wasteland? Well, I think you have to balance it. I mean, I'm a, I am an Uber driver. Well, I'm a taxi driver. I've got my own taxi company and I also drive for Uber. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thinking about sort of how far I could go with it, you know, would it be a case of having a trailer on the back of the of the van whereby I can right. up sticks and go somewhere and then unload the, uh, the the vehicle and go off to work, you know? Oh, right, right. See, that that's Which, very creative. That, yeah, but where would yeah. you... Like, stuff like, where would you go to the toilet? How would you keep clean? That's all, that's all things that... Cleanliness is something that we take for granted, you know, and, and yeah. especially when you're working in a confined space, man, you've <laughs> you got to keep clean. Yeah. Think about your customers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, I mean, I've always been very creative anyway, yeah. so um, if I was to embark on anything like this, and, and my plan at the moment is to buy, because a purpose-built uh, vehicle doesn't appeal to me, so the plan is to buy a vehicle at some point in the near future and convert it myself. Um, and it would involve having either a bath in there or a, a shower of some description, um, you know, that, that it could sort of live happily next to a bed. And a, you know, the, the two main things I, I would want would be a double bed and um, a wood-burning stove. Wow. Um, but, but anything other than that would be a bonus. But, you know, I have often thought about how to incorporate showers and toilets and things like that. I certainly don't want to spend my life squatting over a bucket. No, that's no fun at all. But then I, 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 was a, I was a coach driver for a few years, you know, and I see the, the showers and, and toilets that they've got on the, on the coaches, you know. Right, so it's possible. It can be done. Yeah. But, yeah, I just wanted to add in there that, you know, it's not just an American thing. Right. It's happening, you know, and I think that that is, is indicative of, of what's happening at the moment yes. in society. I agree. Things are becoming too expensive. Yep. And at some point, you just wake up and you go, do you know what? Enough of this. Well, and people are starting to wonder whether it's worth it, right? Because yes. even if you've got a mortgage, I'm starting to wonder whether we will ever pay that house off. I've got to wait for a parent to pass on, you know, to yeah. be able to even yeah. think about it. And that's no way to live, is it? Yeah. What about my kids? Yeah. I wonder whether we just need to... I don't know, and I don't like this idea of, well, we just all need to rent then, because that just means that the rich get richer. Mm. Yeah, well, I don't want to rent. I mean, that's, that's paying someone else's... Exactly, someone else's bills. Know, this is the thing, see, because where I am, although it's not mine, I 
have got the um, ability to be able to redecorate, to do what I want to yeah. do. No, yeah. no one's going to come knocking on the door in six months saying, right, we want it back. Yeah. And that's, that's, the, that's the ball and chain aspect because I can't, really give that up yeah, because because golden think, you're, not gonna, like, you're not going to find that anywhere else are you yeah, exactly. I'm never going to get the opportunity again so then it's like well I'm 42 now so if we go forward another 20 years I would have been stuck here for another 20 years not wanting to be here is that really worth it and it's also it's bearing so in mind that there'll be people listening to this thinking I wish I could get on the list for a house exactly like I said you know I know I'm very fortunate I know I am um, but of course you're, but, you, know, you yeah, can't help but wonder you know, mm. Well, it's the thing, you know, someone, there's always somebody with worse problems, and I know there are, but, yeah, it doesn't mean that your problems aren't, aren't no, absolutely. a problem to you, you know. Absolutely. Hey, nice to speak to you, Simon. You take care of yourself. No Cheers. Thanks, bye, 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 bye. We're bye, gonna, bye. We're going to talk to Matt, we're going to talk to Jerry, we're going to talk to Paul, but, you know, I'd like to talk to you too. 0344 499 1000. You're listening to Talk Radio. Talk Radio. Digital debate for the UK. Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. Welcome to the Now TV summer service to Cinema Central. Today's onboard entertainment includes some superhero action with Marvel's Thor Ragnarok, a trip to the dark side with Star Wars The Last Jedi, and a laugh-along adventure with Jumanji. Hop on the movie train this summer with a Now TV Sky Cinema Pass and enjoy over a thousand movies, all without a contract. To start your 14-day free trial, search Now TV. 18 plus new customers only, pass renews at 9 99 per month unless cancelled. Around 90 seconds and you're done. Seriously, that's how little time it takes to shave your head with the all-new Pitbull from Skull Shaver. No nicks, no cuts, no problem. You can shave your face or head wet or dry. Pitbull from Skull Shaver just does the job. You're just seconds away from a super smooth shave this summer with Pitbull. Save 10% right now. Go to SkullShaver.com and use promo code SPORT. Hey, Philip Schofield here. We buy any car.com reckon you could find out what your car's worth in under 60 seconds. I know, I didn't believe it myself, so I timed it. And it's true. It actually took me only 53 seconds. Not that it's a race. So if you want to find out how much your car's worth, or just want to beat my time, enter your reg number now at webuyanycar.com. I think I might give it another go. 49, get in. Admin fee may apply. For more information, see webuyanycar.com slash info. Camera. Alarm clock. Matchmaker. Sometimes you wonder why we still call them phones. However you use yours, Tesco Mobile offer a host of products and services that put you back in control. Now shh, I'm binge watching. Visit us in store or go online to find out more. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Requires Tesco Mobile or unlocked phone. Standard UK landline and mobiles. Home from home destinations. UK residents. 18 plus. Purchase required. Subject to status. T's and C's at tescomobile.com slash terms. The Late Night Alternative with Catherine Boyle. Speech radio with a difference. Talk radio. Paul is in Stoke Poges and he's on the phone. Paul. Hi, Catherine. I'm not going to get annoyed by him tonight. He's not going to have a go at me. It's you, Catherine. Well, I might have a go at you. What do you want to say? Well, you don't. You never have a go at me. My, uh, there's two things I'd like to say. Talking about homeless people to start with, I wish everyone could do this once a month. It's a word I'd like to spread. <coughs> if everyone could cook a meal, say a cheek on carne or a spaghetti bolognese or a big one-pot meal or a big soup, cook a big batch of it and take it out and do it just once a month and take it out to your local town and hand it out to the local homeless people. I do it once a month. <coughs> what, on your own? I do it completely on my own. I get a list by my dad. I take it down into my local town and I, I put it into... For, for flipping out, you can buy in pound stretcher or pet the pound shops... Like you take away cartons, you take away cartons, you can you can put it in visually and take away cartons and just hand it out to the homeless people. Are you um are you serving it in a sanitary environment? What if you make them ill? Oh, so I'm not gonna make them ill. I cook it at home in my own kitchen at my home. I mean, flipping out, God they must be taking worse things than 
Uh, the, otherwise, there'd be email bins, won't they? Well... Outside Burger King or McDonald's. Not necessarily. Have you never thought of maybe working with a charity that's got, like, a proper organised yes, kitchen? Uh, yes, I do. I, I supply food... Ki uh, I've supplied lo local food kitchens, soup kitchens, and they take on... Galway Health and Safety. Well, you say that, but these people are really vulnerable. If you make them ill, yes, they could they die. Vulnerable. But he's just... I'm just... Oh, don't he do, he do, yeah, he does a nice thing. What are you talking about? You're picking on him. I just yeah, I, you are, he you wants are he wants everyone. Oh, you're not picking on I'll me. pick on you in a minute. I'll drop you off. But you um, you know, you're saying everyone should cook. I don't want to eat something from everyone. Some well, people are pigs, you know Paul. Do you know the other thing? Do you know the other thing oh, I Paul, do? Go on. Even if even if I feed six people yeah. with my batch of soup mm. that I've homemade and cooked, it's totally pure and healthy for them. I sit down on their bed, which is a cardboard box or something. Yeah. Okay, and I sit down and I chat to them for 10, 15 minutes. And they tell me stories about their life, where they've been, what they've done. And I just spend 10, 15 minutes with them. And they, their, light, their faces light up when I tell them. I you're a joy, Paul. I, their faces, and I just listen, and they enjoy it. I think that's fantastic. I think yeah, that's... but I just don't understand why you've got a tone of attitude, Paul. I, I don't have any tone of attitude. Okay. I just think everyone should maybe do that. And what have you? What What do you feel it's given you? Like, what have you learned from spending time with the I'm homeless? I'm just giving something back because I've spent. Two, I only spent two weeks as a homeless person in my life. Mm -hmm. But someone came along and once offered me twenty pounds in cash. I wasn't begging yeah. for money, but someone just came along and offered me twenty pounds in cash. It paid for me to spend a night and get some decent food down me, mm -hmm. and and then I was able to get back on my feet again. How long ago were you homeless, Paul? It must have been going back ten years. Mm -hmm. I spend my night. I spend my nights in a bus shelter. Right. Mm. Yeah. What, what was that first night like? Sorry. What was the first night like? You must have it been was, scared. It was. It was pure loneliness. Oh. I felt totally empty. I had. I had one pound twenty in my pocket. That was all I was worth. And, yeah, I felt totally empty. I, I felt that society had failed me, in a way. So I've, got back on my, I've got back on my feet again. I still how? live with my, par I still live with my you, parents but, now. But how did, you, how did you? Because I, because I believed, because I believed in people could be kind. No, but, I mean, how did you get back on your feet if you were living in a bus shelter? Because my parents had sent me back into their home. I see. Eventually. But they just wanted to teach me a lesson, I suppose. Oh, right. So they'd asked you to leave, had they? But, yeah, because I did do some bad things in my past. And they probably just wanted rid of me right. for a little while. Yeah. Taught me a lesson. Taught me a lesson. All right, Paul. Thanks for phoning. Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish by saying where what my dream place would be to live? Go on then. A canal boat, an old-fashioned canal boat. Oh, I know somebody who lives on a canal boat. What I call a Rosie? Do you know what I mean, Catherine? By yep. Rosie and Jim boat. Yeah, I do. Remember Rosie and Jim? I do. Yeah, I call it a Rosie and Jim boat, a canal boat, a barge. Right. That is my dream thing to live on. Okay. Because if you get fed up with, with being in one place, you can just take off and go anywhere else you want to, can't you? You sure can. Thanks very much, yeah. Paul. I'm going to speak to Matt. Hi, Matt. Alistair, don't bother phoning in again. Uh, hello, Matt. Catherine, Katie, good evening. Hey, Hi. Matt. Good to hear from you. Hi, Matt. 
Hi, good to hear from you. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, uh, this is such a fascinating insight and in chat because this is kind of the decisions I've made in my life over the last year. I kind of became one of those mobile homeless by choice people about a year ago. Oh, how about right. that? Yeah, so um, even though I was, you know, Matt from New York when I was calling in before, I actually moved out from New York about a year ago. I lived there for nine years doing work in the city. Uh, my father got really sick, and I went back home to Cleveland, Ohio, where I'm originally from, and helped out with the last months of his wife, helped my mom out with him and all of that. And then I went and had to make a decision. I said, do I want to go back to New York, um, or do I want to go do something different? Do I want to live somewhere else? And most of the people that I was friends with when I first moved there moved away from the city. Uh, a few of them are spread throughout, throughout the world in other places, but a lot of them started traveling and living in kind of mobile full time. Um, and so I had some chats with a few of them, did a little bit of research. There's a whole community of people that do it. And I said, forget it. Let's do that. Because I did the thought of spending that amount of money in New York and fighting every single month just to barely survive. Yeah. While I love the city and I go back, you know, a couple of weeks out of the year for work stuff or whatever, I couldn't justify that the amount of stress and all of that anymore. Yeah. So I, I sold everything um, when I left. Uh, and then after my dad died, I, I sold most of everything. I have just a, like a box full of storage stuff, which I leave at my mom's house in Ohio, where I'm from. Um, now I pretty much live out of my backpack and my suitcase. And this year I came here to London for a bit. Then I went to Toronto and Montreal. I've been in Puerto Rico for a couple months throughout the summer. I was in Seattle. I was in Portland. Now I'm back here in London, and then I'm debating where I'm going to spend the rest of the year. I'm so um, interested in how in the logistics, like how do you make it work? Because it, obviously, when you're traveling abroad and you're here, you don't have you're not living out of a van or a, an RV, right? Right. I'm not doing that. I think that would be a tad bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, I do see people that do do that, and it looks fascinating, but at my back, I, I don't think my back can handle doing right. that, anything like that anymore. Um, like when I'm here, in most cities, I either do um, Airbnb, um, or sometimes I know people in those communities or those cities that I've just known from other connections, and they might have a guest room, or uh, there's house-sitting opportunity. So each place, it depends. Like oh. when I was here in London earlier this year, I stayed at two different Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm staying with, at one of them, again, the woman that I stayed with actually has became a friend of mine. She works in the same industry, and we had some connections, and I said I was thinking about coming back over. She said, why don't you stay at my place? Uh, the room is available if you'd like to use it. So, oh, that's um, great. Um, you know, so it kind of works out that way. There's, there's different ways of being able to do the where to stay. Every once in a while, it might be a hotel here or there, or sometimes I'll travel somewhere for a project. Yeah. And if it's, you know, if it's a paid project I'm working on, then housing is taken care of. So it, yeah. it really depends on place. Airbnb, though, the, the sort of coverage of it. I remember we tried to, when uh, Ian and I brought the show to New York, we tried to get an Airbnb. And legally, it's a bit dodgy in New York, isn't it? Yes, because uh, when it first opened up, a lot, of, a lot of it wasn't set up to properly pay the same taxes as if you were uh, staying at a hotel. And that was the big issue about right. it. Because um, people were really so, up for it until they realized that we were like, doing a radio show, and then all uh, of a sudden they would back off and it would become unavailable. Yeah. I'm interested yeah. in, what, what is your industry? I work in, I, I actually worked, I started in radio about 20-something years ago, and I started doing some uh, TV work. Now I mostly just do content for online for podcast videos and then do my own content as well. So. So, so when you're doing projects, do they involve the, some of the places where you're going? Like, are you doing travel commentary and stuff like that? Yeah, a mix of the two. Yeah. Um, and then some of the projects, and I also have a bed of clients that I help work on their projects and, and their content as well. And uh, I built it so that way I can pretty much, as long as I have an internet connection, be able to do what I need to do wherever I'm at. So. And, mm. and do you feel that... I mean, some, the last caller we talked to, was it Nigel, Catherine, who was talking about um, Paul. Paul, who was, well, a couple of callers ago, the taxi driver. Oh, Simon. Simon, yeah. um, talking about how he relished the idea of being footloose and fancy free. But I sort of feel like I would feel shiftless and, and, and well, not grounded. But do you feel but that also, way? also, what if something happened to you? Yeah, right. Like, uh, Matt, who would you, miss you? Do, do you feel like uh, at all at a loss because you don't have a home base? Or do you think that that's what your mom's place in Ohio is? That's a great question. And I had this conversation with my therapist last week. How I <laughs> it's brought up. 
swear to God. Yeah, well. Um, yeah, I just put the talk radio um, phone number as my emergency contact. So <laughs> you guys get the call. And it's the only number I really know off the top of my head. I'm like, just call them and figure it out. Um, so yes and no. Um, yeah, what's funny is that even though Ohio is my technically home base, especially for like my IDs and you know, my legal address is all based there. Yeah. That doesn't also feel like a home base or home anymore just because I don't really relate to my hometown. I don't really have any friends or anything there anymore. It's just more of a I go and visit, you know, mom and help out with some family stuff when yeah. I'm there and then I'm gone. I'm, I'm only there maybe two, three months at most a year. Yeah. Um, one thing I am thinking about is, and one reason why I spend a lot of time in Puerto Rico is that I think that might actually be a home base for me. Uh -huh. There's tax reasons, but also just lifestyle choices. And I have some friends that have moved down there. So that might be an, opp uh, an option to kind of have somewhere where uh, it's kind of more of a home base that I'm there, not necessarily most of the year, but for, you know, a couple of weeks out of the year. At the same time, yeah, I do. Like, I, uh, even though I have friends now in London and I've started to get to know people and I do some stuff here, it does. There are moments where I feel very lonely. I feel disconnected. Yeah. You know, you, you're a foreigner in a new land. You're, you're still learning stuff. And yes, I can connect with people and chat with people and all, but you still feel a bit uncomfortable and you, you, you make an effort to try to get to know people and to chat with them. And it, it still can be. I mean, I definitely uh, many times when I was in Seattle, strangely enough, there was a moment where I actually did have a bit of a breakdown. Right. where it just kind of hit me of I feel a bit while I love traveling and going from place to place to place it can be a bit isolated you can feel a bit lost when you do it yeah. and you have to force yourself to go out and meet people do stuff uh, like I said I have a lot of friends that also do this type of stuff so I chat with them and um, you know and, and try to get some ideas from them or just as a catch-up whatever it might be so yeah there are pros and cons it's not as if it's you don't feel, yes, you hear that term, you feel at home at the world, and in a way you do, yeah. Yeah. because you can be wherever you're at and, and feel at home, but at the same time, yeah, there are, there are definitely moments of loneliness and just, you know, you kind of want to go somewhere and go, hi, I'm lonely, I need friends, someone want to talk to me? I mean, yeah. I do have those moments for sure. Yeah, um, or, for, or for someone to notice you're not where you were, you know, for example, if, if you come home late or something, or, you know, if, my neighbours are not in my pocket, but they would certainly notice if something was going on, you know, it's that kind right. of that kind of thing but, but then that becomes suffocating doesn't it like if you, do. if, if you don't want to if you be... don't want that but but you know for example you know i have a neighbor an older guy and his wife died and everyone kind of while they're not on top of him everyone's making sure that he's you know milk and is taken yeah, in and his bins there's an up. infrastructure yeah. of people yeah but it takes a village it, idea yeah yeah. It's almost as if people sometimes do get too suffocated. I noticed that with the last place I lived in New York. I loved my neighborhood, and I still talk to my old neighbors, and I stay there when I go back uh, every once in a while back to the city. Um, and I kind of get back into it. I see everybody. We go drinking. We chat. We catch up and all. But at the same time, you realize that you're. I, I'm trying to expand my bubble. I'm one of yeah. those Americans that grew up never really traveling. I really never got to learn the world, and now I'm doing that. I'm forcing myself to go out to get out of my bubble to understand and learn and connect in different ways. That's great. That's kind of one of the reasons why I'm doing this. Yeah. And because, because we're at, even in New York, you're in such a you can be in such a small little isolated bubble where yes, it's great that you all know your neighbors and everyone's keeping an eye on each other, but at the same time, that can be dangerous if you stay too long in that. It's oh yeah. Too suffocating. Yeah, and people so start taking you for granted. Yeah, 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 I know exactly yeah. what you mean. And and do you feel that it's a trend, Matt, like that more and more people are doing what you're doing, like you're seeing evidence of it amongst the people you meet around the world? Oh, more and more. Um, Southeast Asia is a hotbed right now, and it's actually kind of a controversial topic because it can be very cheap to live over there. Right. But at the same time, there's a lot of uh, human rights issues then. Yeah. Um, you know, problems of Westerners coming and, and staying in a city and kind of making some changes a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I have another friend of mine who's a best-selling author in New York. He's done very well for himself, written a couple of New York Times best-selling books. He just sold everything and is now traveling. He's in Iceland right now. He was in Europe just a little bit ago. He's going back to Southeast Asia. He just kind of got bored, too. And why, why do I want to keep paying all this rent when I can go and, you know, do something different, explore things a little bit? And he's probably going to stop after a year or two and maybe find somewhere else at that point. But more and more, I see a lot of people asking about it, making making the decision and doing it, because it can be actually, 
at points cheaper than having a place in a big city. Yeah. It's and strange I, how it works out that way. And it does seem, from what you're saying, it, um, I'm intuiting that you are actually gathering a community, I mean, a virtual one anyway, because uh, you, you are establishing friends all over the world. And like you said, there's people in Puerto Rico that you might be you know joining at a certain stage well, and also now the way we communicate with each other you're right. never that far apart really are you yeah. you can whatsapp each other skype all that sort of stuff you you know we talk to each other i talk to my friends that live around the corner most of my phone so what, what difference does it make where they are you know yeah yeah right so, and i kind of like having that though i like having people in different places it's it's weird because i, I flew in last monday and since I've been here, I've seen more people from my hometown of Cleveland, where I'm from, in London than I have in the last year or two when I spent time back there helping out with family stuff. Right. Just because they were visiting here, uh, two families who live here now for work. They're here for a couple of years on projects. So when you travel, you end up seeing people actually more than you do maybe sometimes in just, you know, your hometown and your bubble because people yeah. just get stuck in their routines and all. When you're going to different places, you're meeting those people or seeing people you might not have seen in years. And it's, it, it's, it's fascinating how that just kind of works out that way. How cool. I bet they're the more interesting people as well from home, aren't they? Oh, very much so. <laughs> yeah. Matt, so good to speak to you. Phone us again, won't you? I will do that. You ladies have a great night. Take care. Thanks. I can't wait to see where you are next. When I was a kid, there was a thing called Fraggle Rock, and there was Uncle Traveling Matt. I got a feeling that he's a bit like that. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. If you want to give us a ring, we've got Nigel and Jerry. But you know, you could be on that list too, and we'll get to you as quick as we can. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. Across the UK, online and on DAB. Talk radio. We'll get you talking. You want a quality van at an everyday price? Well, this could be just the deal you're looking for. What's that coming over the Right now at Van Monster, we've got incredible offers like these 2014 Peugeot Partners from only £68 a month. With features like Partex available for your old van as standard. See all the vans and all the deals right now at vanmonster.com. Conditions apply. Deposit payable. Offers to business users only. Virgin Atlantic and Delta Airlines fly to an amazing 230 US destinations. There are so many you can discover everything America has to offer. And we mean everything. Like a buttery lobster roll in Boston, smearing your face in barbecue sauce in Austin, belting out a Broadway classic in New York City, and of course, strutting around in cowboy boots in, well, basically anywhere. Get the ultimate taste of the state with Virgin Atlantic and Delta. Go to virginatlantic.com today to start planning your American adventure. Terms and conditions apply. Become a local hero like Bill. He's an appliance engineer. He joined Local Heroes, an online service that matches customers with trusted traders, like plumbers, carpenters, roofers, and more. With Local Heroes, I'd take the jobs I want. There's no bidding, and it's free to join with no subscription. Feed. And right now, we're on the lookout for more tradespeople. So there's never been a better time to join local heroes. Search local heroes and join thousands of trusted tradespeople. Your time is now, and every second counts. Register with the Open University today, and you'll soon see the difference. Pick up that pay rise before picking up your degree. Get that promotion before to getting to graduation. Says, Be your you future self it, sooner like with our career-boosting courses. Discipline. Visit openuniversity.co.uk before time runs out. Registration closes the 13th of September. The Open University. What's stopping you? Greetings, Earthlings. We come in peace. We wish to communicate with your leader. I'm Howard Hughes. Join me this Sunday night from 10 for a trip into the outer limits. I'll twist the lid on Talk Radio's specimen jar of the psychic, the supernatural, and the simply unexplained. The Unexplained with Howard Hughes. Sunday night from 10, Earth Time on Talk Radio. Yeah, satellite. The Late Night Alternative with Catherine Boyle. You never know just where the conversation will take you on Talk Radio. For example, we've had a text message through from Ian, and this sounds like a very familiar voice to me. K and K, is there such a thing as full temporal simultaneity? Somewhere in time, is it still the 80s with Madonna, the talk of the town? Or do you think time marches on relentlessly? Ian. Um, well, in my mind, the, the 80s is now. I mean, I can, go, <laughs> I can go there and live there. But do you think that there is... I think what he's saying is... I don't really know what he's saying. Like, 
Or the dimensions where it's... Oh, you mean like uh, string theory and parallel universes? All that crap. M- this multiverse. is the sort of thing that Ian's into, which I, I think this is why this is probably Ian. Right. Um, sure. I mean, uh, I like those, uh, this, th- there's been a few movies in the last few years, you know, like the spacey ones where like they're doing a slingshot thing, like the spaceship goes out and boings back and then it's like people, you know, they're stuck behind the cupboard or something. Go for the watch. I, I don't know what, what am I talking about? Interstellar. Was that the one? Like I'm behind the bookshelf. Um, but they got trapped. It's like, um, I think what I'm saying is that it, you could travel between time and dimensions, but then you get, it's like a, um, clog in a drain behind a hairball if there was time travel wouldn't we know by now wouldn't we know like we'd see a younger version of ourselves it or would be obvious it, wouldn't it be obvious um, someone would have made a, someone would have slipped up and shown themselves yeah like people are too dumb like people whenever the thing that i don't get about conspiracy theories like oh there's this whole conspiracy that you know people are pulling strings and such and such is happening or there really are aliens amongst us People always want to blab and show off and gossip, so no one can keep a secret. So I believe the alien thing. Why do you believe the alien thing? What you mean, like they're like Area Fifty One and all that kind of stuff? Not necessarily that specific, oh. but I believe that. I mean, it's more probable than not, isn't it, that there are aliens and that they're. Yeah, but maybe they can't. I mean, I'm sure. But we don't know how big they are. They might be tiny. They might be tiny. They might be living in my eyelash because there's eyelash mites. Did yes. you know about this? I oh my god, this just disgusted to re- they This come holiday, out- I have had more. Oh God, I've I've learned what? more about knits than anything else in the world. I used to think that you. I used to wonder whether you would be able to see knits and whether I'd be able to spot them. I was checking yeah. my head, kids' hair all the time and yeah. thinking, "Am I missing them?" You know when they got them. Oh, they're just like God. Bam, bam, bam. They God. came home. They had boots on. They yeah. came home from school with knits, yeah. and it's taken. It took us about three weeks to get rid of them. Yuck. Yeah, yeah. But what about this thing I was reading about regarding um, your eyelash mites that? Um, they're boy eyelash mites and girl eyelash mites. And then the boy ones come out at nighttime and crawl over your face what? because they're looking for the girls. They all live in the cells or like they live in the pores is what I'm trying to say in your eyelashes. And then the boys are like, let's get some ladies. And then they go and like burrow into the pores where the ladies are and reproduce. But they apparently can't, um, they have no way to dislodge n- night soil so they can't poo poo and so therefore it just when they die they explode they explode and poo in in your um in your pores wow that is a charming image so please clean your face often god i think i'm not using the right technical term but i think that's maybe pretty... they're going to take that doctor off you okay but but it's it, the basic facts are correct <laughs> there but are I don't, such things but i don't know how that compares to multiverses and can we go back in time and Make sure that, um, you know, Michael Bolton didn't happen or something. Oh, no, Michael Bolton certainly needed to happen. Okay. I think he, I, I will have no okay. words, bad words sent against him. Right. Hello, Nigel. Oh, hi, Catherine. Hey, what's going uh, on? Hello, Katie. Hi, Nigel. Um, uh, you're on again. We're, we're on again together. You're on again. Yeah, we're on. So, uh, what time is it now, Catherine? It's co- about nine minutes to, to midnight. Oh, so I've got time for a song before 12, then. Oh, yeah. What, what kind of song? Unless it's American Pie. So I want you to do um, mm-hmm. Carrie Fergus for my mum in a while. You know, the one I did before. OK. Um, but I rang up to talk about... Um, today I went to um, register my mum's death certificate, which was oh. a bit odd, you know. Yeah. But, and it was quite a bit to do. You have to tell them quite a lot about you, your father as well and how he died as well. Really? Yeah. They wanted to know where my father worked and how old he was and what, you know... Uh, all his history as well as my mum's. Huh. Sh- should they be able to tell you all that stuff? The records uh, people? They probably know anyway, don't yeah. they? they? I wonder the if they, I guess they're checking. But, yeah, they're, uh, to make so sure got, you are who you say you yeah. are. Yeah. I got some photocopies, you good, know, good. Um, to, to send to the council and that to get and, and, for, and to uh, get bills reduced and stuff. And oh, yeah, that'll be good. Because so, you, you have to have a photocopy to prove that your mum has died. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. no one believes you, do they? Well, no, they can't just believe you, can they? So no, you if you want to change believe. bank stuff, yeah, you need to... So, so I've got a lady coming tomorrow to sort out the um, the paperwork on things and, and, and try and get the, um, the, the the burial sorted as well. Right. So it's quite a bit for me to, to do. But, I, but And today was the worst day of my life, honestly. Oh, um, but, you know, asking questions of what my mum died of and stuff. And, yeah. And, um, 
It, it, it was it was quite a difficult thing to do, but I managed it okay anyway. Oh. Well done. You know she'd be really yeah. proud of you for all you're yeah. managing to do. Yeah, and I I've been I've been cooking for I did shepherd's pie tonight. Blimey. <laughs> Yeah, I cooked it in the oven. Well, it was one of those takeaway ones. Uh, all right, <laughs> OK. <laughs> you know, you just you just take the top off and you warm it up. It takes ages to cook, though. Yeah. It took about an hour and a half to get to get cooked properly. Did it? Yeah, and, Did uh, you... and it was only a few spoonfuls when I had it. <laughs> Did you...? you know, oh, uh, well, it was... well, as long as you had it in the end, I'm not going to ask yeah, any no, questions, I but I think all. you might have... Potato Did... and meat, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, cottage pie. What I'm on about, cottage pie. All right. They not shouldn't not take an hour and a half, Nigel. What's well, going at least on an hour. It must have took at least an hour. Now, because if you... if you Was it frozen? Pardon? Was it frozen? Yeah, the frozen okay. ones. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they take longer, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've got to make sure... Of, yeah, um, um, there's lots of different meals. I had, um... um what did I have? Uh, uh, a Sunday dinner, a roast dinner, the same way. That was all right. The roast dinner. Hey, you're getting to be the master of the ready meal. <laughs> yeah, and so um, and I buy pudding. I buy um, trifles I like, so I buy a box of trifles. They're nice. Yeah, they're you need a treat. Yeah, you need a little treat at, at the end of the quite, day. They're quite they're uh, quite fattening too, aren't they? Oh, you'd have to worry about that, though. You're super no, fit. I cycle, exactly. I cycle, I'll probably burn a lot of it off, don't I? Yeah, yeah. and all that pumping that, iron. That um, my friend's just gone back. Uh, a friend, uh, uh, a very dear friend of mine, a man about sixty-five. Um, He's just gone back to Las Vegas for three months to work because he's a palm reader. I've told you about him before, haven't I? You haven't told me about him before, oh, I Nigel. Told you, I think he's a uh, palm reader. Well, Brian Brian Gunn's his name. He's a very famous palm reader, but the only one in um, Las Vegas, I would think. Wow. And, and he goes to these um, quite posh hotels and does parties. And well, he's in one particular hotel. He didn't tell me the name of it, but he's there for three months. And, and then he works in London, Brighton. He works all over the place in England as well. Did he read your palm? Yes, uh, yes. I saw him about 20 years ago, and he said I had a long lifeline or something on a, a long lifeline. I hope so. Yeah. And he said I was a strong person as well. Um, oh, good. I hope so. Well, he's right um, there. But the worst thing to come is the funeral. I'm dreading that. But I'll probably be all right. I'm going to sing this, this song for Mum at the funeral. All right. Because Just... she liked this. She said... Wait. She was crying in hospital after I sang it at the Pantiles in Tunbridge Wells. And, you know, when I, I told her I'd been singing, she burst out crying. Oh, blimey. So that upset me as well. And I really do miss her, but what, what can I do? You know, I, uh, it takes a long time to adjust, doesn't it? It's a huge adjustment. It really yeah. is. Yeah. To lose your mum, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and you live together. It's not like... Yes. It's, it's really not like we saw each other once a month, is it? No, yeah. it's really hard, and you're doing so well, Nigel. Yeah. I'm glad you're looking after I... yourself and eating properly. Well, I've got so much to do, I don't get time to, to worry so much as I'm so busy. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. And, um, keeping the house tidy as well. That's good. Um, so shall I do my song now? Go on, then, yeah. Clock? Go on, <laughs> then, quick, quick. Because the hour. We've got about a minute and a half, but I'd like to hear it. Oh, here we go, then. I would swim over the deepest ocean for my true love awaits for me. But the sea is wide and I cannot swim over. The 21st century dream team of dialogue, debate and discourse. Talk Radio, give it some lift. The big story of the day on Talk Radio with the Times. Know your Times. Every weekday from 6.30, join Julia Hartley Brewer for in-depth analysis of the morning headlines. Don't just be informed, be well informed with fearless debate and in-depth opinion from right across the political spectrum. Join me, Julia Hartley Brewer, for the biggest breaking current affairs stories, top guests and razor-sharp reactions.
Yeah. Get a better quality conversation at breakfast. The big story of the day with Julia Hartley Brewer on Talk Radio with The Times. Know your times. At Wix, right now, it's our biggest ever kitchen and bathroom summer sale. Explore the wide range of stunning styles and book your free design appointment at wix.co.uk. Hey, Mercedes, what's better about the new Mercedes-Benz Sprinter? The new Sprinter has better safety and security as standard, with autonomous emergency braking, alarm, and double lock on all doors. With new MBUX 7-inch touchscreen and Apple CarPlay as standard, and the option for me, the Hey Mercedes voice assistant. Hey Mercedes, how's the new Sprinter connected? The new Sprinter has powerful inbuilt telematics, including intelligent route planning, remote tracking, and maintenance alerts to keep your business moving. The new Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. Better connected. Search new Sprinter to find out more. This summer at DFS, there are savings on every sofa in store. But be quick, savings on selected sofas end soon. DFS. Across the UK, online and on DAB. Talk radio, on the hour news headlines. Good morning, I'm David Dobb. A man who was poisoned with the same nerve agent used on a former Russian spy and his daughter is in intensive care. Charlie Rowley survived being exposed to Novichok in Wiltshire in June, but his partner Dawn Sturgis died. Police say his readmittance to hospital isn't related to the substance. Sky's Martin Brunt spoke to Charlie's brother, Matthew. He feels that Charlie Rowley was discharged from hospital a month ago too early, had been finding it very difficult to cope with sudden discharge and being back living within the community where his problems had been exacerbated. One of Britain's biggest prisons has been taken under government control after inspectors found rats running around, heavy drug use and escalating violence. The chief inspector of prisons, Peter Clark, described HMP Birmingham as the worst he'd been to. This inmate was released after 11 months. I got stabbed four times. That scar there, one underneath my eye. That scar there, yeah. um, stabbed in my stomach, battered, just because they can. Spanish police are treating an attempted attack on a police station in Barcelona as a terror incident. The suspect's been shot dead. The Pope's written a letter to all Roman Catholics to condemn what he called the atrocities of sexual abuse Good by man. priests. He's acknowledged that it's been ignored or covered up in the past. New speeding rules could find drivers for going just one mile per hour over the speed limit. It's claimed the current buffer zone of 10% leads to some thinking it's OK to speed. Jack Cousins from the AA has been telling Talk Radio why such tolerance exists in the first place. It's to allow for fluctuations not only in the um, vehicles themselves, but also the speed cameras yeah. that they're using. Now, if we move to a world where there is no tolerance and 30 means 30, you will then get yourselves into a position where drivers will have one eye on the speedometer and one eye on the road, when the reality is they should have both eyes on the road. And Paralympian Laura Stedman has been announced as the 13th celebrity contestant on the next series of Strictly Come Dancing. Earlier, it was revealed Lee Ryan had also signed up. The actor and boy band member said he'd been boxing to try and get his weight down. Mm -hmm. And the weather today will start off cloudy for most with some drizzle before it brightens up. The far northwest will turn wet and windy later on. The Late Night Alternative with Catherine Boyle on Talk Radio. You can give us a ring. We've got another 58 minutes or so. So uh, 0344 499 1000. I'm here. Katie Puckrick is here. Yes, she is. She's awesome. So why wouldn't you? Give us a call. Uh, Jerry's giving us a ring. Hi, Jerry. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Hello. Hey, I thought it was under the hammer. Home's under the hammer. Home's under the hammer, yeah. No, it's going to use one to the property until he's in Stoke. It's always in Stoke. <laughs> I've never noticed they're always in Stoke, but I'll there's keep an eye out in future. Some property is always in Stoke. Ah. It's got garlic, pink wallpaper and stuff like that. Ah. Quite, quite true. Hey, I mean, that bloke used to canals. Did he come? Did he come? It's because you know I come from Stoke. Yeah. It's to Chongo. Chongo, Chongo used to canals in Stoke because he had a small shot. So he can't go through that. So he can't go anywhere. That's short. One more thing. Yeah. I this sounds like a stand-up routine. Jason Darwin's coming to crew. Is he? Yeah. October the 3rd. Oh. Any dream will do. 
A glass of drum. I'm going to sing to you. I can hardly wait. Go on. Uh, no, no, just don't know. I'm going to sing to Jason. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lunch. There's a lunch, 46 quid, but you don't meet him, so what's, what's the point? Hang on a minute. So Jason Donovan is coming to crew. Yeah. You can have lunch. It costs you 46 quid and you won't meet him. <laughs> Not that you're not going to be the lunch. So what is it? What a themed lunch? Jason Donovan themes? No, I don't think so. They're just just normal. Two a charge. Two men. Two two things off the menu. Oh, blimey! It's it's crew. It's a rip off. <laughs> <laughs> they famous for that. Timson's Timson, That's not the most famous thing, did it? All the rest of all the rest of the job is shut down. Oh. And this is gone. I'm on form today. Well, you sound jolly. I, I, I must be. I must be honest. I'm getting every fourth, fourth or fifth word. But I'm, I'm getting three, sir. He can understand me when I can understand myself. He does. He does. He really understands me. And I'm thinking, of, what the hell am I saying? Because <laughs> <laughs> he got me down the other week. Got me really down. Oh, no. bad. bad but go away again. Final one. Go away again. Up the housing, housing list. Show fire away again to the top of the housing list. Get down near the Parkinson's. I got straight to the top. Yeah, but then they took your house off you. <laughs> yes, because it... Yeah, it's been my... My there for eight years. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Eight years, no, I had to pick on the job all night. Wait for... Wait for the gear to open the door. Hmm. It's not fun. Oh, Jerry. Well, it's nice to hear your voice. It's nice to hear you sounding perky. Yeah, it's good. Hey, hey, hey. Bye, Katie. Bye. Bye, Bye. Jerry. Bye, Bye. Jerry. He just reminded me, right, while Ian's away, he was talking about Ian and the farm, because, you know, he's bought this farm. Oh, I didn't know that. Was yeah, that, yeah. yeah, he's got a few head of cattle, and All right. um, he's thinking about giving radio up for, for the good life. But what he also has is a very, very old cat that I'm supposed to be looking after while he's away, right? Ah. Uh-huh. And um, she's very old. She's a teenager. Do you go to the house, or have you brought her to your house? I will go to the house. Yeah, because cats don't like to be displaced. No, and she's They're only just territory. moved to the farm. So, uh, to, to be with him. So, you know, obviously too much messing her around. She's yeah. not going to like it. But her on the paws, of, that's what they say, to keep the cats from running away. Is that right? Yeah, it's supposed to distract them because they're licking their paws. Like, what the f***? Why are you with this? And they lick and then they don't run away. Oh, right. Well, that's worth bearing in mind. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm going to go over there. And I spoke to him today and I said, do you think I should go... I'll go and see... I'll, he, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm on my way out. I'm going to go and feed the cat. And he said, no, she doesn't need feeding for till Wednesday. What? He's got a timer. He's got, like, a cat feeder on a timer, like something from Wallace and Gromit. Yeah, that's but funny. But I said, won't she get bored? He said, no. I said, well, I bought her a tunnel. You know, like one of those springy <gasps> out cat tunnel things. Oh, he said, you're oh, sick. she hasn't played with one of those for years. I went, well... well well, maybe today is the day. See, I like your approach, which is holistic and actually humane, unlike Ian, who seems to just have a pet on a timer. <laughs> I mean, he's like the pet equivalent of that man that put controls in his hands yeah. that we were talking about earlier, yeah. remote control. He does love that cat. But Why doesn't he just get a robot cat, if that's how he's going to treat the cat? A bit late now, but she, she's yeah. old, she like, and she does love him. And What's his, her name, the cat? Velvet. Velvet! And she's a black cat, very skinny. Aww. An old, old lady. But she's great, and I met her last week, or the week before. Velvet. And we get on fine. And I'm going to go over there, really, just to get away from my kids. I'm going to go over there and stroke yeah. someone else's cat. Yeah, you're like, kids, this is really important. It's uh, an animal, an elderly animal needs me. But I am slightly concerned. What, what if she what if she pops her clogs while I'm looking after her? I know. Isn't that always the worry? Guess what? That happened to me. No, stop it. Yes. I was house-sitting slash cat-sitting for very, very dear friends. And the... Um, they have two cats and one of them just took a turn oh, her God. Kid, kidneys packed in and uh it was time to take a dirt nap it was time it was time to you know get that shot the sleepy time shot um and so you didn't just find it i uh, no. you had to make a decision i had to make a decision but i well i i didn't make the decision entirely on my own i took took her to the vet the vet said this is it's curtains it's curtains for pom pom and so then i called, called pom pom yes pom pom and I loved, I just loved her. I loved her and her brother Bambi, both of them. And they're both in kitty heaven right now. But um, where he- Velvet will be joining them shortly. Um, Hopefully not in uh, the next week. Not in the next week. But yeah, but there was that phone call. Oh, it was dreadful to call the, the owners and just say, look, here's the situation. You know, there's really no hope and I'm just letting you know. And then, you know, sobs all around. And then I had to go and 
in fact, I was glad to be there, at least to be there to say goodbye, to keep her company. Yeah. And but finding a you know mortarboard cat um, is a different you know stiffo option. That's yeah, not appealing. That, that's what I'm worried about. I don't want to leave it till Wednesday. I might go tomorrow. Check in, yeah, just for your own peace of mind, and also, yeah, what if the the buzzer goes on the fritz with the, the automatic cat feeder, and also. They, also, she, she's in the house on her own. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. They, I don't know cats very well. Maybe they, she doesn't give a toss. But well, they sleep a lot. Like they sleep. They're happy to sleep twenty three hours a day, apparently. But you know, at least for that one hour, it's nice to see a friendly face, like yours, another human. <laughs> Although I'll probably go in there feeling all humane and, and and saintly, and she'll look at me like, "What the hell are you doing here?" Yeah, you're, you, she'll be like your your fake grandpa. You're disrupting my rigid routine <laughs> yes. of sleeping. And I go in there. She's got the remote control in her hand. What? Yeah, what? I'm watching <laughs> Countdown. <laughs> Make it snappy. When are you leaving? Yeah, when are you leaving? <laughs> well, I am slightly concerned. I'm slightly concerned. Yeah, it's about good to be concerned because you're a responsible individual. You're well, conscientious. There's a reason I don't have any pets because I know that they're hardcore. Yeah, hard hardcore. Work. It is. No, but they give. It's love. I mean, it's. I I saw a friend in Los Angeles who confessed to me that when Rodrigo, her Lhasa Apso, died suddenly of a tumor um, a couple of months ago, she found it harder than when her parents passed harder wow. and she loved her parents you know it wasn't like the, you know there was any estrangement but just that level of i mean the pets with you day in and day out and you probably superimpose a personality on them that perhaps they don't have or a level of interest in your life that they certainly yeah. don't have but um it is almost like a projection oh, of you my, like a, my sister's cat was her absolute pride and joy but before she had the kid she, she, she thought she thought she might not be able to have children so she made this into her baby this this right. cat and um, he died about six months ago. That cat hated me. It was my nemesis. Oh. He used to hang out for me on the stairs and swipe at me. Oh. And then no one would believe me. It was like one of those Disney cats, right? Yes. It's like all sweetness and light to everyone else. But yeah. then when they corner you on your own, then it, the truth comes out. He used oh. to swipe at my face. Wow. Yeah. And be like, rawr, rawr. And I would say, I would say to my sister, he gone for me again. I don't believe you. Yeah, like, look at the little thing. <laughs> he knew Elvis. He was yeah. called. Oh, Elvis! Yeah, he hated my guts. He's dead. He it's hated fine. my guts. Yeah, so I'm not. I'm not sad about it. Yeah. But my sister is. Yeah, it's very sad. To the point where my mum's got one of those big Russian furry hats, same oh. colour as he was. And all over Christmas, we had to keep moving it because um, it was triggering my sister. That is too funny. Yeah, we've uh, taxidermied Elvis. <laughs> He's just over there. He's just over there. We thought it'd be a nice gesture. Help you come to terms with it all. Some people do taxidermy their pets. Is that a good decision, or is that maybe just I too much of a good weird. thing? Ian talks about um, ta stuff in velvet quite a lot. He Does said he, he wants to have her curled up at the end of the sofa. I think it's horrible, a horrible idea, don't you? I don't know. They get a little, you know. It depends on the quality of the the craft men who do, who make it, who do yeah. the taxidermy, but they can look a little patchy and a little hinky jinky after well, a while i don't know how comforting it is and sometimes i think the face they get the faces a bit wrong the yeah, faces are wrong just get it you know what there's a lot of homeless cats out there give them a lovely yeah. home and some love take a beautiful picture while they're alive and just give pet them stop and smell the roses smell their tummies their, right. their tummy fur i'm definitely going over there tomorrow do it definitely right what were we talking about earlier on because we, we had loads of stuff to talk oh yeah about. so i wanted to talk to you about ants Oh yeah, you reckon some ants are lazy? Yeah, ants are lazy. So they're so scientists are trying to they're trying to figure out how to make robots efficient because basically, as you know, as the man who replaced his hand with you know a remote control button, um, we are going to all be replaced by robots. So scientists want to make sure the robots who are replacing all of us are the best and do what they do really well. But what they've discovered when they have uh, worker bee robots is that when like a hundred robots are sort of ru rushing around to do stuff, they get in traffic jams. Um, and so what they did, did right. was, you know, because it's like they're all rushing to do the task, um, much like humans all on a highway trying to get to a destination, the same destination. And then there's a clog. So they thought, hmm, let's look at ant colonies because there seem to be quite a lot of ants in there and they're all doing things. They're very efficient. And you see them excavating their ant nests and, you know, shifting stuff around and dragging food in and dragging dead predators out and, you know, busy, busy, busy. Well, turns out not quite as busy as you would have thought. Turns out that 30% of ants in a community do 70% of the work. 
Wow. So the other uh all this bullshine about every ant counts and yeah the, yeah and and like making us you know humans feel all bad because that like, story the grasshopper and the ant where right the grasshopper got taught a lesson because yeah. the ants had all made provisions for the winter for the winter well it turns out 30 percent of ants were making provisions of the winter and 70 percent were just jerking around <laughs> and it turns out that this is the most efficient way to do it because if 100% of the ants were rush, rush, rushing mm -hmm. to do X, Y, and Z, they clog up the works right. and, and it doesn't actually get done. So um, no hard feelings. The 30% are apparently, as far as we know, happy to do the work because then what they did was that they marked these ants. Like they sort of painted on their abdomens and, and so they had these kind of like Burning Man looking, you know, glitter ants and they took out, they're like, okay, these ants with the green and blue on them they are working really hard we're going to get rid of them took them out of the equation turns out the other ants who were slacking off stepped up to the plate ah uh, right okay and there's like no problem about the hierarchy it's like okay oh bob isn't here to do like the the heavy lifting so i will so it's no problem so they um it turns out that a little bit of well-timed laziness is does actually contribute to a situation so what actually is happening is they're working smart yeah they're working smart and and they're trying to they're looking at that in designing robots. But I kind of related to that because I used to work when I first moved to London many years ago. I worked at Manpower and I did all this temp work. I popped up in offices with my ludicrous um, like really high brush straight up bangs and bright red hair and crazy clothes. And um, I would be doing data entry or working as a secretary in an office. And um, I was good at my job. I enjoyed typing, and uh, we all all the worker bees would go to the in tray and take a handful of stuff, and I'd always finish first. So the other typists would get all mad at me because then I had time to relax. I put my feet up on the desk, open a magazine, uh, maybe use the photocopy machine to make some little extracurricular <laughs> copies from my incipient pop music career. Um, but they were all mad. I was doing my part of the work. I don't know what they, I, and I refused to do busy work. So I don't know. I, I wasn't really sure. I guess I should have done busy work to make people, you know, not resent me, but I can't help it if I'm fast and good at my job. Exactly. If you're organized and no one else is, I used to get the same thing. Cause I was the only kid in my year that was doing Spanish. I used to have a lesson. My Spanish lesson was me and an old lady. And, um, and so I was in class when they were all like not and then when they were in class I was out in the common room doing all my homework so when they did see me I always had my feet up right but that's just because what am I I'm gonna sit here twiddling my thumbs or waiting for you lot to turn up no I'm gonna do get my work done and then we can right. then we can play isn't that funny how that makes makes people all mad I read a story you know Saturday Night Live the yeah iconic comedy show in America um, Larry David, uh, he of the Larry David show was a writer on SNL for a little while. And he incurred the wrath of Lorne Michaels, the, uh, iconic producer of the show. Um, because he, Larry David would very methodically work out his sketches, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's, finish the work, turn it in, and then just be at the elevator banks at, you know, five thirty on the dot, like did my work and the culture at SNL, at that time and probably now was no you stay till one two three in the morning on the friday before the saturday night live and so lauren michael saw it well, a lot of it was sort of cocaine it fueled, was coca it? cocaine fueled as well but it was like a thing where you're like there you're just there it's like part of the you know the writers the writers room and so lauren saw him at the lift and just said what where do you think you're going i'm home i'm going home larry david says i did my work no that's not right so i i don't know that's a but I think if you're a writer or anything like that, you know, I've done jobs like this, right? For example, when I first started presenting shows on um, BBC local radio, because I was staff, they used to really get their money's worth out of me. So I produced the thing as well. Yeah. So I, I would have done all my um, set up myself. I would have pre-interviewed all the guests. Blah, blah, blah. I was in there from like 11 o'clock till 8 o'clock at night, right? Because yeah. I was doing a drive time show. I had no life. Yeah. I had nothing to say for, about anything. Well, that's I had no thing. opinions. I was having no experiences. I had no stories to tell. Right. Yeah, you have the to get out in the world. Stuff, you need to be out and living, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you have to be out and living. That, that's a funny... I mean, television as well, very exploitive industry, and, um, you know, they just expect you to be there. But really, you're no good to anyone if you can't, if you can't bring fresh experience. Yeah. So Something from outside work. Yeah, so, also known as slacking off. <laughs> 
<laughs> also known as just living and breathing in the outside world. God, yeah. I can't remember the last time I just lay on the sofa and did nothing. Well, you were trying to, weren't you? Nah, they're cool. I mean, it turns out they're very tolerant and they um, they didn't ask me for ID or anything when no, I first okay. arrived. But no, they, they appreciate it. Yeah. And I still think, you know, my parents gave me an um, earache about not going away this year. I don't think it necessarily matters where you take your kids as long as you spend the time with them. That is the thing, yeah. Spending the time with them. And, they, and you were saying that, in fact, you were discovering that they're pretty good company they're really fun they've got because now they're my eldest is about to turn 10 and my youngest is about to turn seven and they're hilarious they're like a little mini french and saunders you know the way they talk to each other because you know they hang out with each other a lot and maybe not so much relying on me right if i'm there the little one always wants to sit with me and they, and i tend to be the focus of attention because they, they they're vying for you, you know well they're you're a novelty yeah but when you just when we just hang out, the three of us or the four of us, as it was over the last couple of weeks, they're fun. They're fun, and the way they talk to each other. My youngest was having this, as often happens, turns into um, fighting with those two, verbal sparring, and uh, the eldest was saying, "Your attitude sucks." And she's been watching a lot of uh, YouTube. Your attitude sucks. My attitude's fine. You've got an attitude. I haven't got an attitude. You have got an attitude. I haven't got an. Actually, yeah, I've got an attitude. That was the youngest. That's hilarious. <laughs> At seven, she recognises that fact. Yeah, I like it. And I whispered to her and I went, tell you what, I'll tell you a secret. I've got an attitude too. <laughs> but they're fun, you know, and I don't... It was hard to switch off for the first week, I've got to be honest, and my sleep pans were all over the place, but it was great. It was great to spend some time with them for two weeks. But I am knackered. Yeah, you're knackered now. <laughs> You're, and plus, you had to go on the rickety roller coaster and that, that and monorail, like the man. monorail, the the Flintstones. What kind of pervert invented that? That is like some kind of health and efficiency situation. They should warn you not to go on with someone who is not able to pull their own weight or at least reach the pedals. Yeah, it's, it's a, well, it's a metaphor for society. She was the ant. She was the wrong ant, and she I was, was the, the right ant. Yeah, you were the thirty percent. She was the seventy percent. Hey, have you heard the thing about the um, black sarcophagus? What? There's loads of people on Twitter talking about how they want to drink the juice oh, from the sarcophagus. I know, I know right? about the sarcophagus juice. Right. So do you know what's happened with the latest thing? They've they've, no. they've worked out who's in them. So there's more than one. There's three. The remains of three different people. It's in like there. a slush puppy. Yeah, and they're humans. That's it, and they're all kind of slurping around in um like this sarcophagus juice that they reckon is probably mostly um sewage. Well, Wait, so from their own personal sewage pipe? No, I think or there just... might have been some sort of seepage. Oh, seepage. External seepage, which oh, no, no one wants. Internal to external and back to internal. Don't oh, drink look, that. It's red. What's the... The red is looking quite appetizing, though. That, but, it's like there it is nestled actually, between skulls. I'm looking at the interior of this sarcophagus. It looks an awful lot like what was in the envelope that I got sent by my step This is what I'm saying. He's sending you sarcophagus juice. I should have eaten it. Yeah, slurp it up, get that straw out. <laughs> You're giving me the power. Is that like jelly? It looks like a party treat. It's thick. Delicious. So here's what it's about. Three skeletons have been found inside a black granite sarcophagus mm. uncovered in the Mediterranean city of Alexandria in July. I love it. Nadia Kida from um, Egypt's Anti Antiquities Ministry revealed the skeletons belonged to a woman in her early 20s, a man in his late 30s and a man in his late 40s. Some party. Mm -hmm. The female was relatively short, measuring between 5 foot 3 inches and 5 foot 5. That's not short. That's not short. It's 3 inches taller than I am. Give me a break. How can they be taller in sarcophagus days? That's not right. <laughs> I think they might have shrunk in the... Um... All right. And the youngest male was only marginally bigger. The eldest of the skeletons is also by far the largest, measuring an impressive six feet tall. Oh, I'm impressed. One of the males had a small hole in the back of his head. Ah! Originally thought to be an arrow wound, but researchers now think it's the result of a surgical intervention. Oh, yeah. Tim, Tim trepanning. Trepanning, yeah. And the person lived for some time after the drastic procedure. Yeah, you got a hole in your head. Releases pressure and swelling and was thought to uh, rid the person of any evil spirits lurking inside them. Sure. Yeah, and then marbles, if you get it wrong. Yeah, right. It's believed the bodies were buried on two different occasions as every skeleton was found on top of one another. Mmm, cozy. Oh my God. It's like a sandwich. Must oh, death sandwich. Mustafa Waziri, head of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, said the researchers also discovered small gold plates wrapped in elaborate artwork alongside the remains. Mm. The artwork is believed to indicate military rank and could prove that the individuals were Egyptian soldiers. Even oh, the lady? 
Red fluid and sewage water festered in the 2,000-year-old sarcophagus and caused a social media sensation. <laughs> the ministry says the liquids likely accelerated the rate of decomposition and then it's now being studied in greater detail. Because they could probably learn as much from the liquid as they could from the skeletons. Yeah, I know, right? Like, you know, what are people eating? What are their diets? That's what they found. Like, when they find old teeth, they can find little bits of meat and we went to veg. This, we went to the Jorvik Museum in York. Have you heard of this? It's, no. it's a Viking museum. And as we were waiting in the queue, which was lengthy, mm. this woman came along with, like, an usherette um, tray of goodies for us to look at. Yeah. Amongst them, some Viking poo. And you could see what they'd been eating. You could see there was like um, there were like old sort of rabbit bones in there, oh. and um, cut bits of corn and stuff. That's a good diet. Delicious. Not oh, the yeah. poo, but although apparently they suffered quite a lot with their um, constipation. Yeah. Oh, because they weren't getting enough fiber. I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm guessing. So yeah, the Vikings. So, so um, the sarcophagus in the in Alexandria, uh, this liquid. Are they saying that? Normally, when they crank open, pry open a, a mummy's tomb, there isn't a delicious broth, bouillabaisse. I believe that. I believe that's the thing. That's the difference so with that's, this, that's and also that excited. these three decomposed bodies, like were they were they mummified, but then they decomposed because they were in yeah. the the poo bouillabaisse. Yeah, that's what they reckon that this stuff, this this soup, has um, made them. Was the soup was some of it them, and some of it was from flotsam and jetsam? That's from what, the that's oven. what they're analysing now. Yeah. But my they, God. It's like they have to just sift out the, the gold nuggets from the whatever the other nuggets are. Why does this always get dark with you and me? Uh, well, especially it, after midnight. It's fun. I don't know. It's interesting. It's, a, you know, it is just like the bare, but it's the, it's the ingredients of humanity. Yeah. It's, it's like from dust to dust. I think that's why people are, you know, in Hollywood, where I just was for two weeks, one of the biggest tourist attractions is the Museum of Death. Oh, really? It's, it's on Hollywood Boulevard. And I actually know about it personally because uh, many years ago when I had a show, TV show on Oxygen Network in, in Los Angeles, we did a segment on it. And I just couldn't believe that, you know, 15 years later, the place is still going. And it turns out it's a big tourist attraction. And they have everything from uh, autopsy, you know, Victorian autopsy tables to crime scene photographs which are pretty grisly and oh include God. like you know the manson killings yeah um to like mass uh cult suicides uh where people have all taken you know drunk the kool-aid and they've you know they're in their bunk bunk beds ready to go to the to the rapture or whatever mm -hmm. um and it's uh some things are just sort of interesting in a historical fashion and other things are just downright gory like horrible roadkill pictures of people being smushed you know like half of a person looking like a hamburger on a highway and um i remember asking the man who cur curated the museum and uh led the tours why he would do such a thing because i was aghast you know it's it's of course you have this prurient interest like oh what does a mushed up person look like but then it's just ghastly and you can't get it out of your head and you can't yeah. sleep um but he claimed and he had this great uplifting bubbly demeanor like if he were your you know middle school science teacher you'd be so happy and he said it just makes me feel glad to be alive well surrounded by death right in the victorian times didn't they used to have on their desks to make them work their asses off basically they'd have these what they call memento mores correct so it would be a, a, a skull would, a skull or it would be half of a beautiful woman's face and then it, the rest of it was revealing the skull underneath yeah, the, so it the was painting. kind of remember that this is all of us we're all mortal we've only got a finite time to live in. i guess that's a healthy thing to get it in perspective they were kind of obsessed i mean they? they they didn't they have the thing of like oh no baby died oh, Never mind, just dress them up and pose them for a photograph. They like, did used to take pictures. Of the dead people. I learn a lot of my history from Horrible Histories that my kids make me watch. Oh. It's an amazing program. Oh, is it? It's, it sounds like the sort of thing that that guy at the museum oh, yeah. would have made. Yes. And Victorians didn't name their kids until they got to about seven or eight because they thought there's probably no point. Don't commit. You don't want to commit. It, what do you call them? Like thing or son or daughter? Sonny? <laughs> a girl child? Sometimes a number. A number. Number three? Yeah. And, they, and people moan about um, funny names these days. There were kids called all kinds of things, like, I'm not even joking, things like, you know, Teaspoon and oh, yeah? Lettuce. and Lettuce is a pretty good name. It, it trips off the tongue. Oh, I didn't know that, though. And also about they're not naming. But then they also loved, um, they're very sentimental about dead people, so then they would 
uh, you know, have the hair jewelry, yeah. the woven hair. But of course, now we can do that thing of turning them into a diamond. A diamond. Grandma can turn into a diamond or rust in your envelope. <laughs> oh my God, I can't stop thinking about that envelope. Yeah. Oh, three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand. If you don't ring us, we'll just carry on like this. Yeah, you're in trouble. Talk radio, 24 hour radio debate and entertainment. Talk radio. We'll get you talking. The big story of the day. Talk radio with the Times. Know your Times. Every weekday from 6.30, join Julia Hartley Brewer for in-depth analysis of the morning headlines. Don't just be informed, be well informed with fearless debate and in-depth opinion from right across the political spectrum. Join me, Julia Hartley Brewer, for the biggest breaking current affairs stories, top guests and razor sharp reaction. Get a better quality conversation at breakfast. The big story of the day with Julia Hartley Brewer on Talk Radio with the Times. Know your Times. Times. Alarm clock screams, bleary eyes, step outside, all quiet, 15 bags, one small hatchback, try not to wake the neighbours, kids stir as we lift them in, faces crease from pillows, pull out into empty roads, golden arches, coffee and bagels for the journey. Over 600 McDonald's open 24 hours, we are awake. Philip Schofield here. I love that with WeBuyAnyCar.com, you could find out what your car's worth in 60 seconds. Then you can get back to doing whatever you were doing, like your hedge trimming. You can't see, but I've sculpted a flamingo mid-flight, and I'm pretty pleased with it. To find out how much your car's worth in 60 seconds, mm. enter your reg number now at oh, WeBuyAnyCar.com. photos they need to take of dead people. Admiracy may apply. For more information, see webarnicar.com slash info. The Late Night Alternative with Catherine Boyle. Speech radio with a difference. Talk radio. Just talking about how macabre things were in the Victorian times, but people still do portraits, you know, of of babies that pass. Do they? Yeah, yeah, I know people that have had them. It's something that they give you in hospital so that even if you can't deal, you know, it helps you deal with it in the long term. Yeah, I guess, I mean, it makes sense because you... Because that's your child. Yes, yeah, that's your child, yeah. Um, Have no no input on that particular... But the macabre. I'm not being a mother. I'm not, uh, but then again, um, yeah, I guess... Especially with a baby, you can't. It's not like you can go down to the shelter. Well, you could go to the shelter. You could fought, go down and to the orphanage. Just pick up another one. Well, in it's the a vi- snap. in the Victorian times, they didn't have high expectations of uh, mortality. So I guess I don't know. They just they seem to have, in some ways, a lot more of. Um... Well, they faced facts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that I suppose they had to. Yeah. There was no cushioning from r- the harshness of reality. Do you want some more facts? Please. Loch Ness monster found. What do you reckon? Again? Shocked tourist captures 20-foot object lurking in the highlands. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems like finally the, the mystery is completely solved. In this bizarre video taken from the shores of Loch Ness in the Scottish Highlands, says the Daily Star, a long black object appears to breach the surface of the water. Uh-oh. It then appears to travel across the loch at startling speed. The clip was posted to YouTube by an unnamed user. Hmm. Immediately. Hoaxy folksy who wrote, I lay back sunbathing with a friend on the beach, having lots of laughs, and then as the day went on, we looked at the water and saw something unusual. It looked about 20 feet long and kept going up and down. Up and down, huh? So I turned my camera video. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. It came right round, as you can see in the video, and then passed to the right of us in the water, where I could no longer see it. It was actually amazing. Whatever it was, it was big. So put your name to it if it's true. Yeah, I don't know. And also, do people really go and hang out on the beach of Loch Ness? Is I don't it know. is it that kind of environment or I thought it was just blokes with like binoculars that went hung out bin- there. <laughs> blokes with binoculars. What is that pervy um we were watching some weird reality show that I've never seen in my life and it had a pervy guy in it that everybody knew was a creep. Um uh what was that one? Big brother. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, interesting that there's always, you know, the bloke with the binoculars or there's always the one designated creeper. Um, and that show had it. Oh yeah. yeah. Maybe more than one. I don't know, but he certainly is, um, getting attention for it. Hand, he? Hands on. He's very hands on. Do you believe that thing of some people are really tactile or do you think that, uh, do I believe the thing is one, uh, um, n- cause uh, I've heard that quote unquote defense a number of times oh i'm just no. really tactile no 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 because um if you're 
loving and uh, I don't know affectionate. I know who I can touch. Yeah, you know, you still have boundaries. You know, you would not. Uh, yeah, if you the thing is, if you are loving and affectionate, you also, if you're normal or nice. Um, you prov you have empathy and compassion and a sense of what's appropriate or not appropriate. Yeah. So a person who's handsy, touchy feely, and just says, "Oh, don't hate me just because I, you know, I love people. I'm really friendly." Like he's, you know, they're turning a their vice into a, you know, some sort of fantastic selling point about themselves. So no, I don't believe that. No. I've had experience before of people who were. And this is this is the term for it, a space invader. Uh -huh. So that there's nothing you can, you, nothing you can say that they've nothing. done. They've not touched you. Not actionable. But but you know that they are closer than they need to be. Yeah. And they're doing it on purpose. That's the mo that's insidious. That, that stuff. That's like a control thing. Mm. As are well. you going to say anything? I mean, that's also like if you saw any of the um, Trump. Clinton uh, debates where he was just hovering in her space too closely, so he's like lurking around like Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> that was weird, wasn't it? Yeah. So much of what he did was weird. I know. It's just it's it's just fun, you know. But he strikes me as someone who's never been told that his behavior is inappropriate. Oh, I think he was though, because his dad apparently was extremely domineering. Oh, really? Yeah, his dad was extremely horrible. So I think that went. That's why he's so such a limited individual that's why he's so damaged and so like he needs to keep going i'm fantastic and let's have another rally because where he's I, telling himself yeah he needs to pop you know pop himself up but he'll say oh yeah my dad was really tough so i think both mom and dad were really withholding and i mean you know and he he took that material and really turned it into something on his own as well oh my god yeah but um but i don't know that he, we could call him touchy-feely <laughs> Unless he's handsy, he's handsy. Yeah, yeah, he is definitely. Well, I don't know what I meant by that. He is definitely he's handsy. handsy. But also, now hang on a minute. What about the whole thing of having to hold hands with people, female politicians? What's that? Uh, he... Theresa May does not strike me as the most um, approachable woman in that way. No. It's not like who would you do that to? I can't think of anyone well, you would do it, that to. Anyway, and it's but... so funny. And the opposite side of the coin is Melania, like desperately slapping his hand down when yeah. he's trying to, in a showy fashion, like, Oh look, we're holding hands. Just like we love each other. Like the Obamas did. Uh, and she's not having any of it in their separate bedrooms. But I, it, this, it, this is one of the few occasions where I, I wish Margaret Thatcher were, were still around because I would love to see her go toe to toe. Oh my God. With Trump, like you she might would, him try to grab her hand. To, uh, she would just he he would be she, dead. She would get a karate chop to she, the windpipe. I, karate chop was exactly the term I was going to use. There'd be like a punch in the throat. God, I don't think he'd even try it, would he? Oh, he would. He would. Try. Oh, I heard this interesting. Um, uh, broadcast uh, radio doc on news and kicking back with the the boys in the cabinet like she was a, quite feminine quite flirty yeah i've heard that, that she was quite flirtatious she yeah. wasn't a, she wasn't a woman's woman she no. quite liked that whole thing of um being the being the object of their admiration yeah yeah queen bee so so that was kind of a, a interesting insight but yeah i think she'd have a she'd uh put old don donny boy in his place oh my god can you imagine it'd be, it'd be supreme just to see that yeah He's so good. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Cats are awesome. I will find out whether I get to keep my sweetheart. Oh, this is from Roger, who's had a cat hanging around at work or something. He wants Aww. to keep it. Well, I think Ian had a go at him last week, suggesting Why? that... Well, suggesting that he'd stolen someone else's cat. <laughs> oh, because the cat was so friendly. Like, it wasn't a, a, a feral yeah. cat. And it was obviously, like, very... Um, so, so Socialised. Yeah. I, I had that. I had a moment once with someone else's cat. That sounds wrong. But I used to live in a block of flats where at the end of my corridor there was this couple and there was often a really strong smell of weed coming out of their um, apartment. So, And they were there all the time. And they had this cat that they used to kick out into the um, corridor but not open the main door. So it would just be trapped in this kind of hinterland of no, not being in the flat but not being out enough to be able to do anything that cats like to do. Yeah. So it used to like scratch at my door oh. and it used to be there and I used to sort of look at it and it was very scrawny and mm. I remember thinking god if this was a kid if this was a kid would I call should oh. I call the RSPCA yeah and, and on the occasions where they would open the door and let it out it used to jump in through my window and, and I, 
on a couple of occasions I found it sitting on my bed. Aww. So, you know, if I wasn't the person I am, um, maybe I would have kept that cat. But you can't do that, can you? That's well, somebody else's ca- pet. Ca- well, cats are... Uh, they will adopt humans and they will make decisions about where they want to hang out. You do hear the stories about, like, well... Kevin, the cat, disappeared for a week and then it turned out he was living in high style, three doors down. Yeah, but I wouldn't be very happy if that was my cat No, I moved in with my neighbour. No, I mean, that really, there's no coming back from that. That's quite a blow to one's self-esteem. Yeah. Is this cool for us, Happy Tree? All right, no. Yes, I seem to remember there was always a little bit of a problem getting hold of him. If you want to give us a ring, 0344 499 1000, we'd be glad to hear from you. I've got loads of stuff from the papers to talk about. We could do we can do that, but I mean, I would prefer to hear your voices always. Or almost always. Almost. Talking about cats on beds, what about a, a, a rogue man on your sofa? A mum stunned to find a drunk stranger asleep on sofa after a man blunders into his old house. Oh, that old chestnut. Easy mistake to make. Yeah. I don't know. Did he have the key in his imprinted in a chip in his hand? Is that how he got in? Oh, God, I don't know. How did he get in? Here it says in the sun, the mom or two got a shock of her life when she came across the drunken stranger fast asleep on her sofa. Fortunately, the mum described the man as polite and he'd only gone there as his parents lived there two years before. He must have had a key, surely. Elaine McDade said she'd been watching TV in bed with her children on Saturday night in Glasgow when she popped downstairs for a drink. After hearing some noise in her living room, she looked through the door to discover 26-year-old Thomas Airley, an engineer from South Lanarkshire, in an alcohol-induced slumber on her couch. He'd let himself in, so yeah, he must have kept the key, to the wrong house and gone to sleep on her couch, but not before taking his shoes off at the door and helping himself to a drink from the fridge. Always like Goldilocks. Elaine claims she woke the apologetic man immediately before her husband dropped him off at the nearest Asda because he couldn't remember where he lived. Oh my gosh, he was really he was in a out, state. out for the count. The dance teacher later discovered that she'd forgotten to lock the door for the first time. Oh. Ah. And Thomas had later drunkenly entered after getting a taxi there as it was his parents' former home. She said he even took his shoes off the back door. He was a polite guy. I'd just arrived back from London that night and my husband was at work. I was in bed with the kids on Saturday night and got up to make myself a drink. We were watching TV for about an hour and a half. I don't know if he was already in the house by then. Oh, my gosh. Later on, I went back downstairs and that's when I saw him fast asleep. Thomas, who'd been out with a group of friends, was happily snoozing on Elaine's corner sofa when he was woken by the homeowner. He left his friends at 11pm last night. that night. Blah, blah, blah. Obviously, absolutely mullered. Yeah, imagine. That's, that's benign story. That's fine. I mean, it's it's not ideal. I'd rather have a cat sleeping on my sofa <laughs> than a drunken idiot. Oh, definitely. I have a story, though. A friend of mine, Guy Pratt, uh, the euphoniously named Guy Pratt, who's a very, very talented session bass player and he's played with everyone from Pink Floyd to David Bowie and Michael Jackson and he played the bass on Madonna's Like a Prayer. Oh right. And um, he grew up in this neighborhood right down the street on the cut. His parents who both were actors and worked in theater had a their home was apartment on on the cut. In fact his dad was in Randall and Hopkirk. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember if he was Randall or Hopkirk. But Pratt would have been the surname. Anyway, um, because his parents were theater folk, he tells all these great stories. He has a book out, My Bass and Other Animals, and he has a a show that he tours from time to time based on his life, which is just hilarious and um, filled with fantastic tales he's telling on he various great. celebrities where did you meet him oh uh he's a f- he goes out with a friend of mine and ah. you you got to get him on this show he sounds amazing maybe maybe we get him in this week um, sure honestly uh, do yeah i mean i don't know if he's promoting anything right now but anyway um but he is such a great storyteller anyway this is one of the stories which is he was a child a fast asleep um and uh, he got up in the middle of the night to get a glass of water. And as far as he was concerned, there was a hobo asleep on the sofa. And he was terrified. This disheveled, drunken man snoring away went in, tipped, like crept out of the room, went in to wake up his parents. And they went, oh, and no, don't worry, that's Peter O'Toole. <laughs> so this would have been like early 70s or something. And you know, Peter O'Toole did like a drink. Or 10. Yeah. 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 Wow, imagine that. Yeah. That reminds me of a story... Not drunken, but wrong a wrong bed story. My dad's friend used to work in London, but he was living away from his family at that time, so he was staying at this B&B 
this is like in the 1980s, maybe late 70s, 80s. He used to stay at the same place all the time. He used to go home on the weekends, come back on, um, uh, you know, on the week, uh, like late Sunday. Yeah. He would just collect his key himself. He could let himself in. You know, the landlady knew him so well, she didn't need to show him to his room anymore. He always had the same thing. So he lets himself in as usual, takes his key, goes up to his room, doesn't turn the light on because he's so familiar with it, gets undressed, gets into bed, and then there's this... Ah! screaming yeah. turns the light on it's dora bryant who was an actress from like famous actress in the 90 i'm gonna say 40s and 50s maybe okay. 60s but yeah he got into bed with dora bryant by accident and that was his famous his brush with fame because obviously there'd been a change in plan and yeah. she'd been given his room and... yeah easy mistake to make but my goodness can you imagine waking up in the middle of the night to have some yeah a man climbing in <laughs> climbing into bed with you yeah, and it Strange. being, like, ending okay. Like, oh, sorry. Yeah. It sounds like something from the sort of comedies that she used to be Yeah, in. yeah. Life imitates art. Oh, my God. It, it, it's, um... I've never been in a situation where someone has let, mes let themselves into a hotel room, but it must happen. There, yeah, I don't know. There's a, um, there's a famous artist, um, Sophie... I'm launching into a story and I don't have all the facts and figures, but anyway, a French artist who as part of, she does performance art and does photographs of herself and very, you know, very, uh, interactive, uh, art with people's lives. Like she'll do things like find letters that people have discarded and turn mm -hmm. that into art. But one of her things was she got a job. One of her projects was she got a job as a chambermaid in a hotel and then would go and photograph people's belongings and their suitcases and everything and turn that into to her art. And then she would, I guess, find out, people's personal details and then send them letters about things that she knew about their lives. Like oh just my. really like stalker, creepy stuff. Um, but the artwork was, was great out of it. So totally worth it. Yeah. Yeah. This was sort probably of, actionable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, she worked in this doing, was doing this in the seventies and in the eighties. So it wasn't, Oh, um, we know those were wild times. Yeah. Those are wild times and a little bit more lawless than they are now. <laughs> Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. We've got about fifteen minutes if you want to join in. If not, you know we're going to get this <laughs> across the UK online and on DAB Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. Honey, why don't we go to your mother's this weekend? So what, you want a trip to my mum's? Yeah, it'd be cool. But it's so far away. Sure, but that's cool. Oh, the roads are littered with potholes, remember? Perfect. Anyway, why are you so keen to see my mum? See her? No thanks. We'll just go there and back. Featuring oh, suspension with progressive hydraulic cushions and 12 driving aids. New Citroen C4 Cactus Hatch like makes every journey a joy. With Citroen, comfort is a Zebra? new cool. Available now with 0% APR over four years. T's and C's apply. Conditional sales subject to status 18 plus PSA Finance UK Limited. Citroen UK Limited are acting as a credit broker and not a lender. Friendly. It's arrived. The lads camping weekend. Not glamping. Oh no. Proper Zebra. SAS and stuff. And only a short eight hour drive away. Sadly, the only entertainment is Steve's chemo yeah. playlist. Some mornings just call for a breakfast wrap. Anne, Bertha, Cecilia, Diana, Emily, Fanny, we'll Gertrude, Patricia. before 10 30 a.m. It's here, but not for long. Existing and new customers can get Sky's best ever offer on Sky Sports and Entertainment, both in stunning HD. Enjoy over 500 epic live football games and indulge in award winning shows on Sky Atlantic, all for only £40 a month, saving you over £350. But this offer won't last long. Search sky.com. £20 standard setup for new Sky TV customers. Customers, kit loaned at no cost. New 18-month minimum terms requires oh, HDTV. Saving based on 18-month minimum contract music. versus £60 per month out of contract. Across the UK, online and on DAB. Weekends with Penny Smith. On Talk Radio. I'm Penny Smith. Join me on Talk Radio for the perfect weekend breakfast. I'm going to be reviewing the papers, taking a look at all the best new film, book and theatre releases, and I'm going to be chatting to a whole host of celebrity guests live in the studio. Weekends with Penny Smith. Saturday and Sunday morning from 7. On Talk Radio, we'll get you talking. The Late Night Alternative with Catherine Boyle. You never know just where the conversation will take you. On Talk Radio. I mean, very unimaginatively, both Katie and I have got quite a standard name, haven't we? Yeah, well... Are you Catherine not, or are you Katie? I'm Kathleen. But it's not un unimaginative on our fault. No. But what is it? Like, Ka Katie... 
I used to be, there always used to be more Kathy's in my class growing up and I, there'd be a hand, you know, a couple of Katie's, but now I hear Katie all the time, like yelled at toddler. So I, I have a toddler name now, which is, I guess it's good. I don't have an old lady name. No, when I was growing up, there weren't that many up North. And then we moved down South and there were quite a lot actually of Catherine's, but none huh. of them were called Catherine. They're all Kate's and Katie's and yeah, like you say, Kathy's and all that kind of stuff. Yes. But my great grandma Elizabeth thought my name was Kathleen till the day she died. Get involved, she, grandma. She used to call me Kathleen all the time, and it got to the point where I just stopped correcting. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Wow, exactly. It was no point. I'm not on the ball, <laughs> grandma. Focus. Hey, happy tree. Hey, Kathleen. <laughs> Cheeky. We've um, had a bit of trouble getting hold of you tonight. What's going on? I don't know. I was speaking and you weren't hearing it, so... Oh, how odd. We can't have I don't that. Know what's going on. Maybe Brexit is not allowing British people to speak to uh, the greater EU or something like that. That'll be it. That'll be it. The um, onslaught has begun. <laughs> yes. Um, nice to hear you in fine fettle. Thank you. Uh, with, uh, with Katie as well, I remember you from the... the oh God, I've forgotten what the... The show was now the tube. No, the word. It was the word. Yeah, that's the, the one. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, I was just interested. I mean, I, I've been listening. I haven't phoned for ages, but I've been li still listening now and again. But I just lost the interest in phoning uh, any radio for some reason. But you sparked my interest by you were talking about invasion of personal space. Yes. Well, um, I have just left a job because of this that has been going on for about two years and it's, it's well I mean as a man do I get to complain about sexual harassment yes <laughs> yes you course, do um, of course so certainly it's it, it's interesting well it's interesting from the perspective that I now know what it is and and how insidious it is because yeah. you just can't prove anything and exactly. you can't you, you see and, and it just totally it just makes you feel very, um, what's the word, unsure of yourself, very unshaky. I don't know. I don't know. No, I mean, it makes you feel a, very weird. A lot of a lot of its power is the fact that it's could be passed off as being in your mind. Well, I mean, it's like oh, well, it's it's this horrible. But I mean, I won't go into all the details of my workplace. Uh, but was it a woman <laughs> then that was, was doing? Teacher, it, yeah, well, well I mean, the thing is, being a language teacher, I'm I'm always working predominantly with women mm -hmm. because mainly women do languages. So um, I found myself the only male in the eight-strong language centre in this school uh, in Estonia. I won't mention exactly where it is because it would be identified and I'm going to slag them off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I have never encountered such corruption and lies, blatant lies. Like... The, now, am I so naive? The boss goes to a meeting and they tell her something. She then comes back and she has a meeting with us and she tells us, she, it's just a, a fiction. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, well, they said that and then they said that and this wasn't my idea. And the whole thing was her idea. And then she comes up and, well, OK, let's get on back onto the main subject. What she did to invade my personal space was touching, pressing into me when she comes up to my desk and looks at something on the computer and, you know, she's kind of leaning into me. And I'm like, what's she doing? But when they start doing that, you just think, oh, well, maybe they're just leaning too far out. Who knows yeah. what? You think, oh, that was awkward. And yeah. It, and then it goes on and on, and you think, what, what are you doing? Um, and then the worst thing she did, which was very weird, was that, you know, I'm sitting at a desk, so I'm at that height, and when I, she wants to speak to me, she came and came up to the desk and crouched, like squatted down, and looked up at me and showing, you know, what there would there would be on view um, oh. in that position. And I'm like, and I'm thinking, what are you doing? You're my boss, and I'm here to teach people. I'm not here to flirt with, and you're married anyway, and I'm not interested. And what, what are you doing? And this is totally inappropriate. Yeah. And it turns out that she's been going round the entire school for two years, flirting with all the militia people. And, oh, maybe I've, I've mentioned what it is now. And um, they were all completely enthralled to her mini skirts and high heels. And right. In, in the middle of a meeting, she would sit in the middle of the, of the, of the room 
and just have our skirt like up our waist, you know, the kind of thing where it rides up, you know, when you put cross one leg over the other. Oh my God! And she would wear and she would wear stockings, but had a pattern specifically at the top. So that, and I'm thinking, well, we're not meant to see that, and uh, so I had to leave that place. I was just I can't I couldn't take it anymore. But it was just. It's an interesting thing you're describing because, of course, you know, it's sort of like your typical reader's wives fantasy. But when you, it's happening in reality. And when it's your boss. And, and she's being a sexual predator. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's but totally... all those things you're talking about, standing a bit too close, pressing against you, um, uh, accidentally giving you flashes. That's all standard predator behavior yeah. that men do, you know. Yeah, so. it's, a, it's, a power, yeah. it's a power play. Well, she's daring you to say it something. Is, it could, it could, it is a totally power thing because she, she was in cahoots with her superior, who is a high-ranking officer, who can basically do whatever he wants. So she, we suspect, you know, he had a, he would do anything to protect her from everything. So we suspect that there was something you no, know, going on there. And so she got carte, carte blanche to do anything she wanted. And so I would go to people and complain and say, what's going on? And they would say, oh, well, that's just her and, you know, just... You're overreacting. Why don't you just ignore it? And I'm like, no, I can't. I can't do this. And I, I, do you think there's also so, an element of sexism as well, where it's like, well, you know, men can't be bothered by that because that's what men like. No, you lucky devil. Fancy being able to get that. I mean, we've already got people on uh, YouTube saying, oh, where is this office? He's like, yeah. yeah, right. But, you know, if it's happening to you and it's there, unsolicited. There, there, and... There, there were some, some reactions like that. You know, it's difficult to be taken seriously when... Uh, and then, um, well, one time, you know, you know how you sort of subconsciously react, and you don't mean to. Yeah. So I was going through the same same door as her at the same at the same time. She, you know, I was going one way, she the other, and I just I thought I just walked through it, and she was like, "Oh, right." And then I looked at my position, and I'm like contorting huh. my, you know, like my feet, my feet are on the ground, but my waist is like pushing away from her. Yeah, and right. I'm, body I'm, language. This, this, you know, this bent shape as I'm trying to walk as far away from her as possible. Pretzeling I yourself. I I yeah. Oh, God. You're talking about um, uh, manoeuvres that a lot of women will have found themselves doing over the yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. And, but and uh, it's no less valid when it happens to a man. I mean, do you... Uh, I, I guess you both have encountered this in your uh, professional lives. I have. I don't know that I have in that. Oh, you know what? I, some people take advantage. Uh, who is that creepy racing uh, commentator? That oh, older guy with all the McCurry, hair. John McCurry. Yeah, yeah. So he, I had to meet him once uh, on oh. on the word, and I went to shake his hand, and he did that that weird, creepy little finger scritch, oh, you know, no. in the palm of the hand, which just suddenly feels really intimate and and it violating. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was up for it, and uh, it was most unwelcome, and it was on camera, so I couldn't react to it. Is that the night you hosted the pig racing with Jean Jean Gabor? Oh, it may well have yeah. been. <laughs> oh, happy days. Hey? That sounds blissful. In a parallel universe. <laughs> happy tree, thanks for giving us a ring. Thank you. Okay, cheers. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. Um, Roger, we'll have to be very quick because I've got Paul Ross here. Yeah, hello, Paul. Hello, Katie. Hello, Catherine. Hello, hello. everybody. Hello. I'm not going to get shouted at or at again, am I? Why, have you nicked that cat yet? <laughs> well, I took, I, took a home on, I took a home on Friday. <gasps> you did nick the cat. Uh, gonna take her to a vet to see if she's chipped. All right then. All right, that's good. If so she's not chipped, I'm gonna keep her because finders in, keepers. Middle of in a middle of in a middle of a town centre. There was nowhere to uh, where she, where local she could have come from. Okay. Looked on Facebook groups. I think one of my colleagues put a post on a missing cat Facebook group for Doncaster. So you've Nothing. tried due diligence. But my mum stole a cat. Oh, it? it runs in the family. You've got form, mate. You can't help yourself. <laughs> we'll have to take that story another time, Roger, because you yeah. phoned up just in the nick. Yeah, don't and worry. It, and it's Paul's. OK. <laughs> Thanks, Good Roger. Speak to you again. You've been sounding great as ever tonight. Wow. Um, I heard you mention Dora Bryan, who had a minor hit yes. single in the early 60s with All I Want For Christmas Is A Beetle. And she was with oh, Noel yeah. Coward um, in Private Lives. And Noel Coward said, you need to check, she was broadbent. So she got a name from the back of a Bryant and May Matches box. Oh. In the programme, they left the tea off, so she became Dora, Dora Bryant. And she played Rita Trushingham's mum in A Taste of Honey, which is a oh, lovely film. Yes. She's, she's the old, oh, oh, come on then, love, what's happened to you? Yeah, One of those old actresses. fantastic. Brilliant actor, brilliant actor. Yeah. Didn't deserve what happened to her, though, did no, she? No, she did not. Somebody <laughs> surprised you at midnight. Maybe she did. Maybe she did. Maybe she changed the numbers on the door. Who are we to judge? Yes. You know, all kinds of shenanigans happen on the road. Speaking of shenanigans, what are you up to tonight? On the programme today, we're uh, talking about a fascinating... I'm not a big believer in the paranormal, though I hosted that uh, show, Most Haunted Live, about five years. But um, Which I loved, by the way. We're going to... <laughs> Woo! 
<laughs> just screaming in the dark as the building settled. But we're going to Hinkley in Leicestershire where they've got a museum of paranormal objects, including voodoo dolls. They've got things like crucifixes that were buried upside down at crossroads over a witch's body. So we're talking about a bit oh. of that. And we're also going to, which I'm particularly looking forward to, we're going to be talking on the show today about sack racing. Because a new record has been set for race. You know, sack racing in America, you don't have that maybe. Well, I'm just concerned about what kind of sack are we talking well, about. It's a school <laughs> sports day thing. Children put a gunny sack up their oh, legs okay. and they have oh, right. in it. All right. A man has set a world record, okay? He beat Mo Farah's record. He did 200 metres in a sack after training at a Wait, gym. Does, a Mo, does Mo Farah... He was paid to take part in an oh, event right, and he okay. set a world record because he's right. very athletic. Yes. This guy did 200 metres <laughs> in a sack in 28 seconds. Wow. He's on the programme. So I'm looking forward to that as well. What kind of core muscle strength must you have? To, to be able to I do that. very strong buttocks and upper thighs, would you yeah, say? Yeah, but also your, uh, I don't know, uh, we can mention the word taint again. I think that comes into play. <laughs> I think there must be some sphincter muscle that, wow. that, that provides like a certain p in, internal pogo no, action. That, that, that helps in so many ways. And it on really that does. bombshell, all of us up next. Thank you very much for your company tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Talk radio. Digital <laughs> debate for the UK. Yeah. Oh, talk radio. We'll get you talking. The football's Back. Which can only mean one thing. The Selco Predictor is back. Sign up now at talkradio.com slash predictor and use your footballing foresight for the chance to become a millionaire. Plus, there's a grand up for grabs every month for the Selco Predictor top scorer and an unforgettable trip to Las Vegas for the highest points value at the season's end. The Selco Predictor. Download the Selco